Contra County Board of County Commissioners meeting will come to order. Let the record show that today is October the 23rd, 2019, and the time is 9 o'clock a.m. Mr. John, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I would appreciate that. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Madam Clerk to the Board, would you conduct the roll call, please? Commissioner Flowers. Present. Commissioner Kanda. Here. Commissioner Prince. Present. Commissioner Clint Smith. Present. Clerk to the Board, Kelly Campbell. Present. Thank you. Audience introductions, Ms. Jackie? Jackie Bubas for the Sentinel. John Genovese, Custer County. Josh Barwell. Bruce Barwell. Okay. Good morning. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Everybody's able to find a seat okay? All right. Good. Approval. I'm sorry. Amendments to the agenda. Gentlemen, anything? Commissioner Kanda? No. Mr. Prince? No, sir. Nor do I. Approval of the minutes. Mr. Bruce, pleasure. I move that we approve the minutes for October 1st, October 2nd, September 30th. September 30th as well. Yeah. Okay, I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes September 30th, October 1, October 2. Discussion? I couldn't find one mistake. I tried. Good job, Kelly. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Minutes are approved. Commissioner Adams. Commissioner Prince, would you like to begin, sir? Sure. Well, we had a last meeting. Can you speak up just a little, please? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. It's okay. Since the last meeting on the 10th, excuse me, the 3rd of October, I met with Vic with Ranch and talked about death for them. On the 7th, we had the Justice Center meeting. On the 9th, I attended the West Custer Fire Board meeting. Of course, on the 15th last week, we all attended, we all participated, we all did the budget. I don't know how to say it. And then on the 21st, we had the landfill meeting. And then yesterday was CES. And a lot of miscellaneous things, but those are my organized meetings that I went to. Commissioner Kinder? Yeah, it just seems like yesterday. The best part since the last meeting was I was on vacation for 10 days in Virginia. But while there, of course, the phone was always ringing. So I did a lot of talking to people on the roads and the airport. We were working in the airport trying to get the meeting scheduled up with OT6. We're still working the costing. And we haven't gotten Cypher's bid yet for the asphalt. We're still waiting for that. And we're going to set up a meeting with the airport board and discuss the way ahead. Landfill meeting, I thought, was a good one. We've attended several meetings with both the CDOT lady, I can't remember her name, and the other guy that was there for the state. Her name was Jill Parisi. Jill. Yeah, she was with CDOT. And the engineer with the Golden Engineering. I thought they had a good team. And Golden is on top of it. I thought the meeting went well. And we've got a pretty good shot at getting a good permitting process done with a lot of, should buy us a lot of time here, I think. Trenches. Also worked the budget, and we balanced that. And I thought it was a lot smoother than it did last year. I really appreciated Donna's way she put it together. It went well. I second that. And then, of course, still working roads. I'm 
getting a lot. I don't know how you have been, but I'm getting a lot of complaints on the uh, how the the C dot or the uh, CenturyLink uh, has not cleaned up their mess in a lot of driveways and a lot of things yet. But I keep telling her they give them a chance to finish. So we'll see how it goes. Now. Dragging their fiber. In. That's it. Okay. Uh, yeah, obviously, all three of us sat through the budget hearing last week. Um, on the 20th, I attended the 4-H uh, awards banquet over to school uh, Sunday afternoon, and then uh, also sat in on the CDPHE Golder uh, meeting on the landfill expansion with Rusty, and that was good. I did not attend on Monday the clinic EMS committee meeting. Did they have one? Did you say, Jay? If you did, I missed it. Clinic and EMS committee. No, 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 no. that was postponed. The clinic um, had their board meeting. We had to discuss it before they met back with our committee. So it was postponed. Okay, good. And uh, of course, yesterday I also attended the CES meeting on Research and Rescue for their. Uh, yeah, it was Christy Coleman uh, led that whole <coughs> meeting on resource management, uh, so I thought that was good. Didn't feel like it really applied to me directly or to us unless it was a major uh, emergency or catastrophe, and then when would commissioners get involved in that? So. Uh, <coughs> So uh, I was also on vacation this month, so I uh, didn't have a whole lot to report there. Can I ask something? Yes. Just yes. Because it's my nature to do this. During the budget hearings, we started out more than a quarter million dollars out of budget. And in five days, we presented a balanced budget. And the only reason we could do that is because the, the groups that came to us that asked for money county budget pitched in and cooperated to help us balance the budget. And I just want to publicly commend every single group. Nobody demanded. Everybody said, let's work it out. They trimmed their budgets where it was appropriate. We left the budgets where it was necessary. But I just want to publicly state that I feel that every single group that sat before us came in with the right positive attitude and helped us make our job much easier than it could have been. So I just wanted to publicly say that. Yeah, it's a good point. I certainly felt more at ease this year. Maybe it's a combination of a couple of years of budgeting under my belt, but certainly I thought everybody was more than willing to yeah, look into it. <laughs> well, yeah, she was very pleasant because she didn't get a dime. <laughs> Imagine that she was pretty easy to get along with. <laughs> Got anything else, gentlemen, before we move on? Okay. Uh, I don't have anything for Upper Arc. I did not attend their meeting last month. I haven't gotten the minutes yet. Of course, we won't until they meet again. But and I'm still waiting for the uh, Blue Line Committee uh, uh, next meeting. They're trying to schedule that. Okay. I uh, did not attend it because I attended the. Uh, the broadband John Carmel meeting that I felt to press it over there. That's why I asked uh, uh, John to join us this morning. Um, I understand the court did issue a date for trial. Uh, yeah. Just from my experience, although I don't know how District Court of Colorado really works, most of the time there is a date picked and then some delays take place after that, so that's probably not the firm date. Council, is that probably appropriate to say in district court? Is district court hold to there? Um, if they set it for a trial date, I mean, they're so busy that usually they want to get it done on that date and I'll bump it down the road again. Thank you. So we have a deadline to get our act together. I just mentioned that. Yeah, and I received that paperwork as well uh, left it at the office but it was in 2021 i don't remember july or something 2021 
Um, attorney items? Well, I sat in on some of the budget hearings, but I was there for a selfish reason. I was protecting what I wanted, and I didn't yield an inch. I was like a dog guardian. <laughs> oh, that's true. Well, that's the time sure. he was out of hand. Sure. I, I got mine, so. Well, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that, because there were several of us wondering why you were there. We never would have dreamt you were there to guard you and yours. So. It was a junkyard dog in that meeting. You know, I'm, I'm a lawyer. That's what you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. I wrote a, or reviewed a letter that Jackie had written. She does that sometimes. Uh, this one was a letter where there was gross non-compliance and a septic issue, and my job when I review her letters is to just, re you know, I have to kind of tone it down a bit, remove some of the language about tarring and feathering and firing squads and things like that. Um, before she, You did get that, didn't you? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, um, I reviewed that agreement on the agenda today for with Golder Engineering for the landfill expansion. May have a few suggestions on that. And now I'm starting to get involved in I never I don't know whether it's FreeCom or C R C A. I mean both names are used. Where is Shannon? Back there. What are we calling it? So FreeCom is the communication center, but the C R C A that's the official title of the board. Combined so regional communications. communications. I don't know what the A stands for. Uh, authority. authority. Okay, that's right. So that's the board. Okay. But FreeCom is sort of the overall name for the Yeah, board. it's the Fremont community. All right. So I've looked into that, and uh, the attorney, Richard Mandel, from Canyon City, who represents FreeCom and the board, um, has a very lengthy intergovernmental agreement already, which he's going to need to revise to include Custer County got some information from Shannon on exactly how this is working as far as Custer County and the Sheriff's Office goes. And <clears throat> if Mr. Mandel is going to try to get something together and send it to me as soon as possible, at least a temporary agreement, the plan is to have a final IGA in place by, I think, June of next year. Um, but we need to have something in writing in the meantime. Right now, I think it's pretty much operating on a handshake. Um, but I assume everything is going okay, Shannon, as far yes, as... Yes, sir. All right. Yes, okay. well, well. So I'll be working on that. And I guess that's all I had to report today. Okay. Thank you. Give me just a second here. Um... The pre-trial conference for uh, 18W3076 is set for Friday, April 23rd, 2021. And then obviously the trial, I thought it mentioned that exact date in here, but that's what I was looking for. Uh, hmm. I thought it was on this document, but I guess it's not. But after April, obviously, because the pre-trial conference is April 23rd. Okay. Pardon? It's the 13th or 20th? 23rd. 23rd for the, for the pre-trial conference, yeah. And then we have another status hearing in January, January 31st at 9.30 in the morning. That's what I was just making a note of. So mm -hmm. Get that. Of uh, 2020. 2020, yeah. Um, admin assistant, you good? Public comment before we go? Admin assistant ought to bring up, if you don't mind me interrupting. While, while we were here, she took on the task of doing the uh, grant for the underfunded courthouse. This was, to the best of my knowledge, the first grant that you have actually written. You had kind of people helping and guiding you, yes. but you are welcome to bring those kind of things up when we ask. Okay. Because that was a very good deal you did. Thank you. Sure. 
You got to learn because I never hesitate to brag about myself. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's what I'm trying to say. I told you what you did. Yeah. Don't talk about the fact things. Typically, if you're going to brag about yourself, you'll have to interrupt one of us. Yeah, we're too busy. We're too busy doing bragging about ourselves. That's exactly right. Yeah, that grant was for thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, and it. Uh, it went through the process and it'll be considered on November the 21st uh, up in Denver at the underfunded courthouse cash security fund commission I actually had to do a little research yesterday I sat on that committee but I had no idea it was cash security fund but anyway so we're in the hunt for 30 grand and and I've informed that commission that I will be recusing myself and abstaining from any vote uh, on that according to state statute. So, um, public comment, anybody? Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Um, what is the status? It seems like it was back in May when you guys handed the short-term rental discussion over to the Planning Commission. And since Jackie's here, I thought I would see where we are on that. Yeah, I was thinking about that the other day, actually, because uh, I guess we had a little issue with a short-term rental property in the county, which made me think, hmm, we kind of lost traction on that. I don't know that we sent it to the Planning Commission, but I can't remember exactly. So, I don't know. Uh, yeah, you were in the meeting. I was in the meeting. I said I don't remember exactly what the outcome of that was. We decided that the cost at the time that a larger county ought to take it over and at that time El Paso County was going to look into it because of the short-term rentals are so popular in Bell and Aspen and they have the money to go forward with their short-term rentals and then we decided we'd look at the septic systems to see if the short-term rentals were were following their septic rates. Could you clarify for me when you talk about other counties I'm concerned is Custer County. What is it that we were looking towards the larger counties for? Uh, they were El Paso County was going to take it on. Short term rentals. We we're going to see about the regulations. policy the regulations. And we were stuff. kind of going to. So we were just hanging I'm back sorry, and letting them. I, you kind of lost me because I thought we were talking about Custer County. If I remember correctly, it's been a while we talked about how many folks could go into a, to a facility in the septic that and then the fire code needs to be up to date and inspections, stuff like that. So that's why I was a little confused. Yeah, and then, the, but see, the unincorporated part of the county doesn't have a fire code. What we could get them on is the septic usage. Okay. So right now, um, it was on the news again, not last night, the night before, El Paso County's back at it, saying how many is allowed in the neighborhood and stuff. So we're just waiting on that to see it, how far they get with the legislation because the state allows you to do that. Okay, so you say our position or the Planning Commission Commission's position is to kind of wait and see what else is going on I, in the state. We, you know, during that meeting that you attended, we had a lot of short-term rental people come in and that were against us doing anything. So we just told them that we're just going to look at the septic is that is something I can control. Okay, good point. Thank you. Tom? Yes, sir. I have one thing I forgot. Go ahead. Yep, no problem. Uh, we were part of a class action lawsuit uh, for PILT funds underpayment by the federal government. I did nothing except join in on it. I'd like to take credit that it was my legal skills. But there was a settlement in that case. We got our payment. The total amount of the settlement for Custer County was $16,000. Um, but we got, after attorney's fees and costs were taken out, our share was about $10,600. Ten yeah, it must be like $10,000. Now, when 10, you say 000. attorney's fees, clarify that. Not, not my attorney's fees. Okay. Yeah, the, the big time attorneys that were made millions off this case. Uh, because you take, we paid $5,000 or so, 6000 for our share, and you multiply that by thousands of counties that were involved in this. Um, they, they got rich off it for sure. So we got 5000 uh, up. We got yeah, five about five thousand went to them. We got the ten thousand six hundred. That's pilt funds. 
So that's earmarked, and it's not something that we could, you know, use to balance the budget this year or anything. Um, and, I, and that money was received by the treasurer, so I, that's all taken care of yeah. now. Good. Yeah, thanks for uh, mentioning that. I did a little research and visited with uh, Virginia and the treasurer's office. That, that total, I'll round it out, was uh, the lawsuit settlement was $17 million and the uh, attorney's office out of Washington, D.C., their, their, well, their attorney fees were 23000 but their or their expenses were twenty-three thousand. The attorney fees was five million four hundred thousand dollars. How about a, a hand so, for the attorneys? Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. So, well, those guys did a good job. So that left eleven million dollars in that lawsuit to settle between those counties, and uh, so that ten thousand dollars we received, we have to split that thirteen ways in our county, and uh, the school district would get roughly. 50% of that amount, and then the other 50% gets split by the other 12 other entities. So uh, I think I sent out an email. So we, I'm going to guess we, we'll probably end up pocketing about 800 We've bucks. got enough to add to our coffee fund. Yeah. And for the benefit of our, our guest, I knew is property or payment in lieu of taxes. The federal government pays us for all the land that's owned by. The federal government, we don't get any property tax on it, so it's reimbursement for that. Yeah. And I emailed uh, I can't remember his name now, I could look, Douglas, somebody out of Washington, D.C., and asked him when we thought, when he thought we were going to get an estimate of our PILT funds for 2020. They sent us our bill. We know what our dues are for 2020. For private or public federal lands. We belong to a federal lands uh, committee through CCI, and they've certainly sent the bill for 2020. So I asked him when we thought we'd get our uh, revenue amount, and he thought it'd be June of 2020. So they certainly want our $740 now, but they're not going to tell us how much money we're going to get until the middle of the year next year. So, oh well. Anything else? Yes, sir. Um, you mentioned that you're getting calls about the uh, construction work that uh, CenturyLink is doing, pulling fiber through, and that they haven't necessarily done a good job on finalizing soil and driveways and things. Do you have a single point of contact from CenturyLink? And that also... Why are they putting up these poles? And we've had a lot of that. And Kim get, got involved immediately in that to make sure, and they did actually make sure they weren't good. That, and that's a subcontractor, probably miscommunication with, yeah. the, with the CenturyLink superintendent. Yeah. But anyway, things are going pretty good from that point. Yeah, I was just kind of curious if you did have uh, yeah, sure did. people, even with Sangri and, and Black yeah. Hills and that. If I may, thank you for recognizing me. Um, I, I've got some comments about like the tires on the side of the road and it looks like there's trash. And I, in fact, what I've been telling people is it's a cleanup, not a distraction. Right. While they were trenching, they found a bunch of tires discarded. They put it in one pile for an easy collection. You see them out there on 69 coming right. down. You can see and, and there, there's other places favor. too. So it's a positive, not a negative. They're helping clean up the trash that was along the highway. And in fact, we did have some complaints. Uh, some of the crews were throwing their plastic bottles and water away and litter on it, but they got right on it the minute uh, I let them know. And it's really a road and bridge thing more than county commissioners, but we're aware of those contact people. And yeah. So Roger Squires kind of been our lead person on that. He certainly knows who those contact people are. Yeah. Does, does Roger and, and or somebody else from Road and Bridge go out and inspect areas? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Roger has been doing that and uh, said he's had some conversations about him to go back and kind of clean up some places and. Uh, I personally have not gone to any of those sites that were kind of under question, so I can't speak to that myself. But I was looking for the names of those. We had a meeting with two of those people. And, Tony uh, Hasnick. Hasnick, uh, yes. Yeah, Tony yes. and... I don't remember the... Yeah. I got it written down somewhere. Oh, yeah, good point. 
Anything did, else? Did, did that get rectified where, where they were putting up all the poles? I don't know. It the got, it got was, resolved, but they ended up taking up. You know, they had to put some poles up because of the way the ground was. Well, poles uh, in that situation go in as a last resort uh, because what happens is they find so much rock, boulder, and right. things, and cutting through that is, is yeah. one, expensive, and two, time-consuming. Yeah. The other thing yeah. we found out in that, I'm sorry, Tom, uh, is uh, the right away that Sanger and Crystal used was different, and they actually, and this, and these guys were stuck on the right of ways and the roads. So got them into some other territory. It was hard for people to understand well, how come Sanger can do these guys can and it's it's um, you know putting by our, uh, cable over cable, and uh, they try not to try side by side, side, but not you know that's tough. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything else? Okay, we'll move on. Uh, unfinished business, gentlemen. I have none. Mr. Panda. Okay. New business. We'll allow public comment on any item that. Uh, looks like we're going to end up voting on an action item, so I'll uh, be diligent in asking for public comment on these new items of business as we go through. Uh, first is consideration of ratifying the signature on the underfunded courthouse grant. Uh, Commissioner Kanda and myself were out of town, uh, so Commissioner Prince acted on our behalf and signed that underfunded courthouse grant application. Thank you for doing that, sir. I appreciate it. Um, before we go any further, I would move that we ratify the action of you signing that on our behalf. So it's been moved and seconded to ratify the actions of Commissioner Prince signing the underfunded courthouse um, app grant application. Uh, discussion. I'm trying to pull it up here real quick. And yeah, you did the right thing because the, the time frame, the deadline would have been missed if we had waited for us to get back. That's why I did it. And I, I also felt it was not a controversial <clears throat> issue. I was concerned that the public didn't have an opportunity to have input on it. But since this is just a request for funds, I didn't feel the public. I would have been amazed if the public had an issue with this. So I took it upon myself to do that. Right. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, I looked at it yesterday. Uh, well, maybe it's in my board packet. That's why I can't find it. Hold on, Pardon? That last email, not the three questions from Kelly. I have it right here. The one right before that. No. Do you want a copy of it? No. Okay. Do you want a copy of it? No. No, I didn't get it into my board packet, but it doesn't matter. I looked at it and saw your signature on it, and, uh, and again, they sent a document out to all the members of that commission uh, informing us of who applied and how much money they were requesting, and Custer County was on that list for $30,000, and I talked to Sheriff Barley about it yesterday during a meeting just briefly, and um, did... Chris Barr, under Sheriff Barr, help you with that, or? No, um, Mike helped me. Okay. With them. Um, Mike and Kay. Okay, good. Well, they know from last year how how desperately we need the funds, and uh, was this the maximum that we could ask for? No. Mm -hmm. How how do we pick thirty thousand just out of curiosity? Is that what it was for? Uh, can you speak to that, Sheriff, or not? So, uh, in the meeting, uh, in our Justice Center meeting, I missed it. Good uh, and Jay was there, so Jay jumped in at any point. point. Um, so, we're, we're at the point now, uh, we've gotten back some, the first draft of a proposal from Riley Johnson um, to, on some different options, whether it's uh, the cost for an entire justice center as we had originally uh, done the needs assessment, um, then uh, it's broken down into three or four different options, of, um, but one's the entire thing, that one's like a, a 
the courts only. Then jail. Only. And then the other is the sheriff's office only, uh, which would encompass the jail as well. So there's three different ones there on costs. And so um, the reality is, is that now uh, the county has to, to do some work um, with probably George K. Baum or, or a, a similar uh, company that can help us uh, get an accurate assessment of what we're going to need to do if we can do it uh, and the feasibility of you know those options on how to raise money um, to fund whatever whatever, whatever project we're, we're going to do and so so that thirty thousand dollars quite honestly is a is a, a for so lack of a better word it's almost a swag consultant. but it's a it's a guess on about how much it's going to cost for George K. Baum to help provide those services, and that and that number was floated by Tom Franklin from uh, the state, who is you know works all with all the different counties around the state in building these projects. So he said thirty thousand would probably do that, uh, take care of that, and so that's you know the deadline was October fifteenth, right. and and we met on the seventh or the eighth of October, wasn't it? I saw it on the night. On the night, so yeah, it was right in there. Um, so we were up against the wall, so we went ahead and did that so that we wouldn't. Because the reality is, is yeah, sure. every year that uh, we keep putting this project off costs the county one and a half to two million dollars. That's that's how much that project will increase in cost. Um, and so, you know, every year that we keep kicking this can down the road. It's costing our citizens a lot of money. So, uh, is that is that accurate, Jason? It is. Very so, when when uh, when do they let the uh, results? When's it I would finish my be awarded? December. Is it yeah, December. This December. Year we have still? to go. The the document Tom showed me. There's we have to go up like in November, right? The, this one. Correct. Remember uh, last year, I. I don't recall if you went or not. I went up there. Several of us went up. Yeah, yeah and we went up. They all went. That's why I said uh, they, Yeah, that's right. That's why I said they know. That was a great presentation. Yeah. How bad we need to right. have a justice in our court. And the key is right is that these this grant doesn't encumber the county. This is money that they're keeping. The underfunded courts is providing to the county to help us do the research and the groundwork to to hopefully build. Well, what I found real comfortable is Lisa Rowe is one who said that. In her experience with other counties, that the thirty thousand should be adequate to get a good assessment on what availability of money may be in the county, and how we would do it if we did that. So I felt comfortable with that number. Go ahead. So this is so Mr. Baum is going to help us figure out where we're going to get the money Correct. to do that? I mean, is that what this yes, grant's for? He will help us develop some kind of strategy to go about fundraising for this. Okay. He'll look at our income, a lot of information that we have, and then determine from okay. his assessment what he feels the county could raise and what would be the best way to raise it. The grants, okay. maybe bond initiatives, whatever. I mean, there's a lot. Of whatever. Talk PR, things or things I've never even heard of. And yeah. So that's that's what it's about. Should not do this alone. Thank you. Yeah. None of us have the answers. So one of the things, and we might need to put this on an agenda for a further uh, or for a future meeting. I don't think we need to decide it now. Uh, certainly, I will not be the spokesman for Custer County when we go to that grant hearing. So we're going to have to decide who's going to do that. They're going to have to have a presentation put together. What's the reason? For that? Uh, Just well, we. I guess we don't have to go, but I would think we oh, should we go, yeah, we and, uh, we should go and make a presentation. So, uh, no, I mean, what? Why can't you? I'm on the commission. Oh, oh, that's right, you did. I forgot about that. So, uh, we and probably you can't better have a request. Have a we conversation could. about who's going to take the lead. For a lot that, of politicians do do that. So, uh, I was just reading it. The document that you signed, Commissioner Prince, uh, under the project description, the commission, meaning the underfunded court commission, is very interested in exhibits and other attachments to aid in the review and selection of grant applications, provide additional supporting documentation, photos, professional service reports, 
etc that can be used by the commission during the review process so we just cannot let that fall by the wayside and then on about the 19th of November go oh, crap we gotta yeah, go yeah, so uh, if you're comfortable with it I would ask put it on the agenda for the 31st and then we'll you said that's the 21st some. is when they're doing it correct we got to get them enough info before then. Yes. Well, in, we'll in that meeting as well, and, yeah. and, and I, I'm not going to, but I, it's my thought that one of you as the commissioners probably organized, and, and there probably only needs to be three or four that go. Maybe two or three is enough. I mean, we can remember being up there, and right. I think there was one county that sent one person, one and they guy. were asking for like $1.7 yeah. million dollars or some crazy right. number like that. So, uh, but. I know that uh, Lisa Rowe in the meeting offered that she would be willing to go. Uh, Judge Hunter offered that she would be able to go. So I, I don't think we need to have eight people like we did last year because we're not asking for as much money. But you know, three or four people can put together a quick presentation. Very for us to whoever goes to represent the county to show that we care right. enough right. to right. go. Yes, and that's yeah, that's me. And that's what struck me up there last year was just exactly as Sheriff Byron mentioned that. I, I was very proud of ourselves because we showed up in a professional manner and we were there in it's a great reasonable amount of numbers. Perfect. Would you be interested in going or do you feel the need? Um, no, I, I'll do whatever um, you gentlemen feel. If, if you want me to go, I'll certainly be willing to go. Okay. Um, I think it's important. Yeah, so let's put that on the agenda for the 31st and designate the uh, Yeah, commissioner responsible, and then also who's going to go. And you said that presentation is on November 22nd. November 21st. First. Starts at uh, 8.30 in the morning. One of the rare days I'm wide open, so that'd be great. Let me double check that real quick. Knock on wood. Well, Start time is what I was going to check and see. But right, today. That's the same day as the CES fatality meeting, yes. but I think this is probably... Yeah, I would agree. Um, and just so you know, not to beat the dead horse, but uh, the commission has three million dollars to give out that day. It all happens on that one day. Actually, that's not true. The commission reviews and evaluates all of the applicants and then makes a recommendation to the state court administrator. So the state court administrator makes the final decision on all that. Um, but there were 11 counties requesting $4,180,719. So they'll, three million of that will be covered. Um, and I believe that starts at nine in the morning. March 11 counties asking for what, two and a half million? Uh, yeah, but their court ordered order five million. million. Court, yeah, they've been ordered by the courts. Yeah, so, so. yeah, and then uh, the next closest amount was five hundred thirty-two thousand up in Lake. So, mm -hmm. Lake County's building a new court. Small, yeah. So I'm hoping because actually we were the smallest request mm -hmm. requested amount of thirty thousand. I'm hoping we'll. And this was, there was only two, no, there were four, sorry, uh, master planning grants. And so we were one of those four. So hopefully we can, don't take it a person if I ignore you when you're up there. I don't, I don't know who they are. I want my name in the paper for. Well, that, I mean, that committee's recognized we're, we're one of the four worst courthouses. In the yeah, there was no like arguing with us about how bad we needed help. They're, they're appalled by some of the things. Yeah. That, those pictures of the hallway crowded. It was the incredible how they basically <laughs> said we're going to approve your grant the first time <laughs> without yeah. ever going to committee, going out there. Yeah. Right. You guys need yeah. this. We don't see it. They, they told us we should have asked for more money, is what they said. Yeah. 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 You know, Frugal, I think. Right, I think we're being responsible. We're being responsible, fiscally responsible, I think. Yeah, so I think we probably ought to maybe have a few pictures and some documentation. I would assume our 
that whole thing from Riley Johnson right. hung out include that. And and just uh, include the uh, pictures from last time and the results of the last meeting and say, see, we do it. need it. You so proved it once. <laughs> We're following for no change. We still right. need to show them how no. bad it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah it, it may not. Probably adding maybe a slide or two to the ones we had previously. I think that even with your child on the track, grandchild on the track, it was fat. <laughs> No, it was because it showed our rural county and how we love our people and how important it was. I yeah, so if we think we need to add some additional slides to that. I think we need to get on that. <clears throat> so maybe we'll obviously we'll address that at the 31st. That would give us a couple weeks to get that. We don't have to send it ahead of time. We'll take it with us and upload it when we get there. So, you have a question, Ms. Jackie? Which Jackie? Tommy. No, today. Were you swatting at a fly? Are we ready to vote for this puppy? Um, we didn't vote yet on the ratification of that. No, we have not. Well, that was, we were in discussions. Thank you. I would have blown by that. That's what I was so about. You were getting ready for it. So. Um, i just get the agenda brought back up. Further discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote on ratifying Commissioner Prince signing an unfunded courthouse grant. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Carries. Uh, actions have been ratified. Next item on the business consideration of the subdivision waiver. Ms. Jackie. Hi. Uh, Turn it over to you. Uh, Alex Kirby, and he had come into the planning and zoning office and requested a uh, subdivision waiver because when he was, uh, he purchased a piece of property and uh, the well driller sent in the, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, well driller sent me in the, uh, the application to get a well and the state turned him down. So that's how come he would need a, a subdivision waiver of Senate Bill 35. So uh, the planning commission usually looks at this uh, for a $350 application. Uh, when I first started looking at it, I, I seen it County Road, and I thought, well, this is a no-brainer. But after further research, I found out that the piece of property that Alex did purchase was a separate piece of property. It did not connect to the other piece across the street at any time. So we're looking at Bull Domingo Ranch properties. And what the uh, state of Colorado has allowed is if you own a large tract of property, you can subdivide your property into 35 acres or more and not have to come before the county. So that is basically what a gentleman did to create Old Domingo Ranch. The problem is, is that he had what I call outlots. Outlots to me are they didn't fit the criteria of 35 acres or more. So the state of Colorado would not allow him, or he chose not to include those in his ranch. So we have some outlots, and uh, Mr. Kirby here purchased one. Now, in order for him to get a well, he's asking for a subdivision waiver. And I think I sent you the map. Yes. Uh, so... Um, it doesn't really show on that map very well. It's a pretty uh, blown up map. The county road that was in question was Haven Road, which is really County Road 251, I believe. Yeah, 251. Uh, I've got it on the assessor's website if you want to look at this as well, or you can go there. Mr. Kirby has 5.6 acres, is that correct? Correct, yep. Yeah, I wanted to see um, Kirby, anything you want to add to Miss Hobbies? Well, I have got my soil analysis done for $500, and I paid my septic permit fee already. I would really like a well on that. Okay. That's about it. And the state turned it down because it's less than 35 acres. Is that their reason for not yeah. approving it? Yeah, to pay wells. What? I don't know what the states, oh, but the state. get an excuse from them. They just said, I what the state. The state uh, turned them down because uh, small acreage. But this is actually within Bull mm -hmm. It is. That's what's strange. That's why I call them outlots. Is because uh, um, the gentleman that subdivided Bull Domingo also owned this stuff. 
not these mining claims, of course. And then here's a hunk of BLM. So that didn't meet the state criteria, so they're called outlaws. They own this one, this one, this one. This is the state's like. Apologize for looking at the top of the dog. Did the dog get this? I ripped it off when I was opening the mail. Yeah, that's right. Those are two so oh, here's Alex. Uh -huh. So, do you, gentlemen, do you know where Haven Road is? Yes, uh, I do. Off of Rosita Road, north of town. Do we? No, Rosita. Uh, sorry, Lake Do comes off of Lake. Didn't mean to say Rosita. Sorry. Right, right after the fairground. May I? Oh. What are you planning it's on? How far is this commission between the two? If we're going to send it back through, he's going to have to the, uh, uh, apply for the 350, but then they would refer whatever their decision is, and I can't speak to for them. Uh, they really are not in favor of handing out subdivision waivers to the planning commission for the less water meeting, so, but they would refer it back to you for the decision. And Alex would have to do the 350, but I can't speak for all those. Here's the, I'm speaking for myself, not out for the other commissioners. We have a process in place that these things go through the planning commission, and I feel that's the right way to handle this. And I'm not trying to be ugly or anything, but it is a process. We're accounting, and we need to follow the process. I think Tom had talked to the chairman of the planning commission. That's not sufficient. It needs to go through the planning commission and makes a recommendation to the board. That's my opinion, but it may not be the best opinion. So nobody in the planning commission looked at it except uh, Vic? Yeah, Vic, Pat, and Keith. All three of them did? Separately. Yeah, I think Commissioner Prince interrupted when you said that I talked to the chairman of the planning commission. Which I'm assuming you assumed that he gave you some indication. Right. So that's not the case. Good. All right. Yeah. Uh, I spoke to him about this, but certainly there was he didn't come to any conclusion. I just asked him about it. So I need to ask you a question, Mr. Kirby, if you don't mind. It's a little pointed, but uh, I think it's relevant. Did you realize if you were buying 5.66 acres that you were not going to get a well permit? No, not at all. Did anybody tell you you were going to be able no, to get a well permit? No. Realtor when didn't, didn't try to sell. TV determined, TBD Haven Road on the uh, Twilight Rose online profile that I found. But TBD uh, Haven Road, that means uh, the address. Oh, the address was to be determined, which has nothing to do with the well thing. Um, she didn't tell you that. She said nothing about it. me not being able to get a well. And she didn't tell you you could get one either, in all fairness. I told her my plans okay. was to put a well septic and build a house on this. Okay. Um, so... When this came across to our desk, I reached out back to Jackie and, and kind of asked her for a little more clarification, one, where this was all at, because it, this says County Road, but it never gets to the number, so I couldn't even really look it up on the map, and so she helped me with that. Uh, and then uh, I called, reached out to Vic Barnes, Chairman of the Planning Commission, asked him if this had come through their process. He said no. Uh, and I asked him if he knew why. He said no. He said I will talk to Jackie about that, and he did. I wasn't privy to that conversation. It was over the telephone. But my general feeling is that, and you addressed this, sir, that it should go through the planning commission first. Um, and they can make a recommendation to us one way or the other. I have a bad feeling about this. Because this Board of County Commissioners has been very involved and very adamant about trying to curtail drilling additional wells on less than 35 acres in this county because we believe it is going to damage the 
the aquifer and the water supply for this county over a period of time, as does the state of Colorado. They firmly believe that we are going to run out of water. They believed that in 1972 when they passed Senate Bill uh, 35. So, I feel for you. Yes. Okay, so let me explain something too, and I think Mr. Prince was involved. The reason why this went through this board is because prior to this, if a county road splits a parcel, like in Corita, uh, we rearranged those and gave them subdivision waivers. But that was because a county road had split it. Okay, so looking at the map, I actually thought that this county road had split it. So that's how come I told Mr. Kirby, you can come before the uh, commissioners because the county road splits it. So when I spoke with Vic, I said, this is a no brainer. It goes through the uh, commissioners because the county road splits it. But after further investigation, that was not the case. When Bull Domingo subdivided in 1990, uh, this road was already built and Grady Tuck had, he has more than this lot that he had what I call outlots. There, the state of Colorado does not recognize them uh, because it's a 35 acre subdivision. So we have some, what I, just for a better word, I don't know what else to call them, they're called outlots to me. In the so, documentation I looked at, that they refer to those as outlaws. Uh -huh. well. So that's the reason why it came through here. So after speaking with uh, the chairman of the board, because he had spoke uh, to me on the phone, and he was questioning why it wasn't sent through the planning commission, and I explained to him, I says, I thought that this was a county road that had split this, but I said, um, because you have to keep track and backwards the landowners and it got real confusing because I thought at one time that this parcel was a larger parcel and they and Grady Tuck split it but that's not the case. Can I ask, Is what's the legal access? Is it off the pavement? Yes. Okay. Um, that mining claim kind of gets in the way. Is that actually the boundary of the lot? The mining claim is actually on the, yes, it Last is one, chance. Of, the back, it yeah, is, they, it's one of the boundaries. And if you read the legal, that was confusing too because they took the MS number of those mining claims for that legal. MS 100 and stuff. That's the mineral survey number. So the legal was even confusing to me. I had a couple of other questions. Go ahead, when did sir. you buy this, Mr. Kerr, back in May of this year? Have you made any improvements on the land here? I've done nothing but did a test hold. Test hold, okay. and I've got my permit. Have you talked to the realtor about the, this issue that's come up? Have you gone back there? I have talked? not yet. Well, I, you know, I don't want to give. I'm not here to give you legal advice, but if you were led to believe that a well was was possible or wouldn't be a problem. You may have a legal issue, and you might want to consult with an attorney or talk to the realtor first. But I think, you know, from where the board appears to be at at this time, um, I wouldn't put any more money into that property until you figure out where you're going from here. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I, go ahead, sir. Okay, sir, thank you. Uh, an alternative that a lot of folks have done, and I'm sure you know this, I'm just voicing it because of, that's what I do. Um, is a sister, very common in the area. Many, many people have them. I'm familiar with several of the water haulers that can supply that. I would prefer not to do that. I'm sorry, sir? I would prefer not to do that. I, I understand that, but it is an alternative. I, I'm not, I, I fully understand. I'd much rather have a well than a sister and also in, in my home. But it's not that, it's not, we would not render your property with no value by if if this board and the planning commission said that it's not appropriate. 
So there are alternatives, and I agree, you know, it's a personal choice whether you choose not to. And I, I really feel for you, because this is a terrible position to be in going into this. <laughs> I, I know, you went into this believing, no problem, I'm paying my fees, I'll hire a driller, I've got a well, and you're going to build your dream home. I don't know if you have a family, I'm not asking this question, but you know, you're going to live in a wonderful community, which this is. Custer County is a wonderful, wonderful place, and all of a sudden, we're putting a big roadblock in your, place, in your face saying, you may have bought a piece of property that has major, major issues with it, and I feel for you. <coughs> is this financed, or did you pay cash for it? We pay cash for it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move to refer this item of business back to the Planning Commission. I'll second. I second that motion. Uh, Commissioner. I did yeah, you did. Did. I didn't say I it loud enough. I apologize. Yeah. I didn't hear it. Uh, and, and this is not the end of it. We're going to get to discussion. The mo uh, motion to refer is debatable. So it's been moved and seconded to refer this item of business concerning the Kirby property on Haven Road to the Planning Commission discussion. Um, there is another alternative. I don't know if anybody's talked to you about this, but if you could... Um, enter in to a contract, and right when I said that, the, to buy water Augment. for, uh, Augmentation. through augmentation. Thank you. That name just went. Uh, so you could look into trying to buy augmented water that would allow you to drill a well on that. Again, as council uh, pointed out, we're not in the business of giving out advice necessarily, but I think it's just information. I don't know if you are aware like, of that augmentation plan. No one else has talked to me about that. Pardon? No one has said anything about yeah. that to me. So something that you could look into as well, uh, because in Colorado, if you can buy augmented water, then that would allow you to drill a well on less than 35 acres. Okay. So there is that possibility too. But uh, I just feel like this is something that needs to go back to the Planning Commission is why I made the motion. I think that's one of the major reasons they exist. Uh, I get it that when Jackie asked to put it on the agenda, it was under different circumstances. And those we found uh, discovered this morning, that's changed a little. So I think it's an appropriate action for the board. Sure, and there may be other, I don't know, you can talk to other people. You, you know, on a 35 acre, you can have one well and supply three Residences, sure. or is it no, one only well on that property? Only on that property. So you can, I was going to say you could buy water. We don't let you cross lines. Yeah. No, but could he buy water from? No. So yeah, augmenting it is the choice. Transport, I think. Yeah. You can't transport water across the lot boundary so. line. So, yeah, to me, and I'm certainly not an expert, it would either be uh, haul water to a cistern or try to buy an augmenta augmentation plan. Find an augmentation plan that you could buy a contract from. Because you don't believe it'll be approved? Personally, I don't. I think it's, that's why I'm, as Commissioner Prince said, feeling for it, because I don't believe you're going to have much luck. Now, I, they might. I have no idea. But historically, uh, I think it's, uh, it's been the philosophy that if the state is not going to allow that, why in the world would the county allow There's that? There's probably no precedence either, because these other small lots... Probably not even sold yet. Please. They they are sold. Those other small lots are sold. But do they There's have a camper on one? Other camper on two separate lots. But we don't know if they have water. Okay. Yeah. 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 See, so the precedence is there. It's going to be hard to beat, beat the rat. How are they going through this process? Pardon me. Nobody's come to us. What was the question? I was wondering if the other lot owners had gone through this process. No. Further discussion on the motion to refer? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. I know you came and made the effort to come down here today. Uh, I'm sorry we couldn't, well, we gave you an answer, but I'm sorry we couldn't give you the answer you were hoping for. Thank but, you. Uh, so, as I understand the process, and I'll say it, and then Jackie can correct us if we're not right, it's your choice to request a meeting with the Planning Commission. And if you want a hearing before them, the fee is three hundred and fifty dollars. Is that correct? Non-refundable. Non-refundable. Okay. I'm sorry. 
Thank you. And you have to have a month ahead of time, so you'll have to go back in the zoning office. My schedule is you go to your realtor. Okay. That's where I'd start. And before you even do that, maybe you'll talk augmentation plan. Understand yeah, costs. Definitely. Look into that, that for sure. Determine something for you to. Is there, uh, Council, you asked the timing of his purchase. Is there a, for lack of a better word, like there was a 30 day escape clause if something was misrepresented? Or is that what you were thinking? No, no, there's not any. There might be a statute of limitations, but not, nothing like that. But just, we really depend on how this was represented whether certain things were disclosed to you, whether you discussed water with your realtor. I don't want to get into that discussion, but if you know, if you believe that you could go build a home if your realtor knew going in this is what your plan was, you might talk to her and see, and you may need to go talk to an attorney for some legal advice, but I really can't go with what I've said here now. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. All right, Alex, thank you. Thanks for coming down. Appreciate it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Alex, what was your last name? Kirby. Kirby. Next item of business consideration about a, a letter of support for a grant for the clerk and recorder's office. I don't know if she's here today. I haven't. Oh, yeah, there she is. <laughs> Um, we sent this out in the packet, correct? This was in the packet? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So, um, would you like to speak to this, Ms. <coughs> Camper? Yes. So, this is a grant that I am applying for um, through the uh, Electronic Recording Board, Technology Recording Board. Um, whenever somebody records something in our office, they pay a $3 fee, $2 of that. A dollar stays in the county, the other $2 goes into this fund that smaller counties can apply for grant money out of to help with their electronic um, recording that we're trying to get everything electronic. Um, the grant that I'm applying for is to help with uh, phase three, the final phase of the project that we started back in 2015, where we um, scanned all those old books and were putting everything um, so that everything will be available online. And this grant money will go towards helping to index those documents. Um, currently, year to date, I paid about $26,000 towards uh, indexing those. And this is going to just replenish my fund. And it's also going to help um, buy a server, a larger server. My server crashed for the, my recording system, and it was down for a week. And I can't have that happen. So how big is the grant? How much? I'm asking for thirty-one thousand. And there's a match for months. No match. Just straight up. And I see you did not have. Uh, well, this is just a cover letter. I mean, the amount's not mentioned in here. Right. Yeah. Is that appropriate or? Yeah. The other. I looked at some other um, letters of support from uh, a few of the other counties that have applied. And uh, just put it together for that, and yeah, they were all the same. Okay, Commissioner Print. Uh, is the memorandum of understanding for control of confidential data that's actually the grant, right? No, that's something totally different. I apologize, I'm looking for it. Yeah. Okay, I saw the letter and I read that. Yeah, I was kind of surprised the amount wasn't there, but uh, that's the procedure. We did not see a copy of the grant itself, correct? No, we did not. Okay, uh, I would move that we uh, sign the letter of support for the clerk's request for a grant for electronic recording. I'll second. 
The moon is seconded to sign a letter of support uh, for the Electronic Recording Technology Board on behalf of the Kutcher County Clerk and Quarter. Discussion? Uh, just if I may. Um, if this is not accepted and turned down, is this something that would fit into a budget that you have that sounds like something that's absolutely necessary? Would you have the fund elsewhere if the grant is not accepted, granted? Um, some of that I paid out of the dollar that we keep. Mm -hmm. um, that has been dwindled down through this project. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm applying for the grant. Um, it, I mean, sure, I'd love to have it in my budget, but... Mm -hmm. You don't have the money to pay. No. So that's what I was just going to Yeah, so if I don't get the grant, we're just going to come to a standstill for a while. Um, I don't see that they would turn it down. They've still got like $3 million in that um, fund, and it sunsets in 2021. So. Who's the thing? Thank you. The uh, grant, or the fund. Electronic. It's the digitizing whatever this board. Yeah, it's in Denver. It's uh, through the treasurer's office up there, mm -hmm. the state treasurer. Yeah, I found it interesting your statement in this letter uh, about electronically recording documents dating back to 1877. So those were the earliest documents. Yeah, those were the earliest. Yeah. And it, you know, not only does it help people to be able to view them online. But it preserves those documents. I mean, if the courthouse were to burn down, um, then at least those documents are preserved. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, further discussion, gentlemen? Public comment? Hearing none, proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. We will sign the letter of support. Thank you. You're welcome. Down, please. The next item of business on the agenda is consideration of the Division, Division of Fire Prevention and Control uh, Cooperative Agreement. Uh, we have that in our board packet. It is a relatively lengthy document, uh, <laughs> quite wordy. I think uh, something Clint would write. Not enough where it is. Yeah. <laughs> I looked through We're a little it, concise here. Yeah, I looked through <laughs> it and it's the same pretty agreement yeah. that signed in. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, Sheriff Byerly, any comments? Well, I was just going to add what uh, Clint just commented on. It's essentially the same agreement. Um, they're, they're ha they did actually uh, slim it down. Uh, there was a meeting that we had at the fire station. Oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't at the fire station. It was uh, in a... Uh, uh, Trinidad that uh, the only director right. myself and, uh, and, and Commander Sheriff Parr went to um, that they did slim down some of the wording and just you know cleaned up some of the language in it but it's essentially the same it doesn't you know it's something that we have to uh, mm -hmm. to do it it doesn't have to be done until the first of the year but we're just trying to get ahead of it and get it taken care of go ahead sir I I move that we approve the agreement for the cooperative file fire protection. Uh, I'll second the motion. <clears throat> the move is second to approve the uh, cooperative agreement for the cooperative wildfire protection with the Division of Fire Prevention and Control. Further discussion? Is uh, there a cost to the county on this? Or no. I don't think so. I scanned it. I didn't read all. Counselor, this I think oh. it's 37 pages. This does not need to be through second or first and second reading. No. Yeah. Can it, just no. like in a sentence, can you tell me what the agreement's for? Just um, yeah. So uh, essentially, what it is is so that if we have a, a a large fire incident again, it's it's part of that agreement. That, so the, the, the DF, DFPC is the state firefighting organization that would help in this with our participation in the emergency fire fund and so forth. 
So it's just the agreement that they would come in and help us manage a major, major wildfire, whether they would take control of the fire if it, you know, if it exceed because most wildfires are going to exceed the capabilities of the county to, to suppress or to mitigate. So it's just part of that agreement that we'll come in to help you do X, Y, and Z. Okay. So the stated purpose in the, in the agreement says, Kelly, that the purpose of the agreement is to detail the process and procedures on how the parties work together to implement statute, prevent, prepare for, respond to, and bill for wildland fires. And I can give you that wording for your minutes if That's you That's okay. I think I've got a copy of it. Yeah. Because so. you have to sign it as well, Kelly. I think yeah, just I acknowledging that. that you're recording. Yeah. Every year. Every year. Yeah. And they've just, yeah. they've gotten a little more particular about some of it because, as we all know, if you pay attention to national happenings, I mean, wildfire is now the normal thing across the country. Um, yeah, major cities. So, and it has become a huge financial burden <clears throat> upon all government entities, uh, specifically the federal government, and so they've put more pressure on the states, and now the states are, they're gonna start putting more pressure on the counties to help. If you're not gonna mitigate, then when you have a fire, you're going to pay, you're going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You all right, Kelly? Yep. Okay, uh, further discussion? Uh, on an unrelated note, did PG&E in California file for bankruptcy. I knew they were thinking about doing that because of the wildland fires they had in California. I hadn't heard, I I hadn't heard whether they actually did or not. Well, you know their new procedure. Yes. Shut so, off. Yeah. Yep, so they're going to shut down electrical grid at any time when they need a specific number because they've over the last 40 years, they failed to properly maintain all their power lines and transformers, and so now the wind is, their power lines are starting fires, so instead of having to pay for the fires, they're just shutting off electrical gear. Yeah, last I read, yeah, 800,000 people were going to be affected by the one two weeks ago this yeah. Friday, so. so well, they've already had one person die from that. Yeah, they Shut off electricity and his oxygen. Killing pig is oxygen. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Quite love machines get turned off. Yeah. All right, I'll turn it. Okay. Uh, hearing no further discussion, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of uh, signing the agreement for the wildlife wildfire protection plan, say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Uh, we have a hard copy of that, so let's just get that dealt with. And then, Kara or Kelly, if you, if you guys get the signatures, if you want to give it back to me, I can scan it and send it back to DFPC, or you can do it however you would like to prefer. pg and &E is a new philosophy on shutting off the power grid. It makes me curious if we're going to start to see that, you know, the last couple of small fires that we've had, depends um, on how many either here they or get just around building. this area, have been because of power lines. Yeah. And I know that there's been some discussion about the lack of maintenance and especially like clearing trees away from power lines and stuff. Makes me wonder if we're not going to see some of that at some point in the future. Okay. okay. Generator company. I think John looks like he needs a break out there. Shannon, do you want the original of this? I don't care. Oh. No, it doesn't matter. I'll sign it. I don't have my seal with me. I think my seal. So, and then I'll get it back. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Thanks. Is that an attempt to call yes. for a recess? Yes, sir. Um, by consent. If you don't mind, folks, we'll take about a three-minute, four-minute uh, restroom break. <laughs> oh, I like mold. I got no problem with mold. Uh, meeting will resume. Uh, next item of business, consideration of approving the engineering design and operations plan for the landfill. Uh, EDOP, we met with uh, Golder 
Associates and CDPHE last week about this document. So we told them at that meeting we could not take action on it, that we would have to put it on the agenda for today. So I'll move we accept this one. Okay, move and sign. I'm assuming you... Yes, sign. I'll second it. Been moved and seconded to sign the proposal for engineering design and the operations plan for lateral expansion of the Custer County landfill. They're going to do a bunch of... Well, sorry. Yeah. Discussion. Sorry, sorry. So the expansion includes, you might explain it, there's several approaches. There's the trenches that can be put in still, and there's a big area filled, and then there's mounding that can still occur above the trenches we already have. So we're going to try to get permitted, my understanding, to include all options. So we don't have to go back and keep working new options for that area of ground that we already own. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. I'll let Kelsey speak to his concerns, which I thought were extremely valid. I had one item when I read this that just kind of glared at me, and it's on page 207 of the actual agreement and indemnifications. They will not defend the county, but we will defend them if an issue comes up. And I just felt either we both should defend each other or neither should defend the other. That was just my point, but I'll defer to Kelsey if that's appropriate or not. Okay. Kelsey, would you like to speak to that? Yeah, I saw that. I didn't like that particularly, but it was more the fact that they have the standard language in there that any litigation would take place in the state of Georgia in the federal courts there. That's one of the things I always look for in any contract that we're going to sign. If the contract's going to be performed here in Colorado, then it should be in the court here in Colorado, and Colorado law should apply. Having said that, we've worked with Golder for a long time. I don't anticipate any kind of problem. We've worked very well with them, and they're responsive. So it's not a deal breaker, but I'd sure like to see that part at least either changed or deleted instead of us agreeing that we litigate a case all the way across the country. Would your recommendation then be not to sign this until discussions occur? I would ask whether Rusty does it or somebody to just see if we could strike that language from the agreement. Well, let me ask a question, Clint. It seems to me it's saying it's a county landfill and it's a county request, and they're working for the county. Don't we assume some responsibility for that from a liability point of view? Well, it's all contractual. See, the government buys a lot of stuff, airplanes, trucks, cars, whatever, and they're responsible for the contract to put them together and do things. Otherwise, you'd be having a lot of... You can't put the liability down to the subcontractors, I wouldn't think. If they make a mistake on our watch... And the red, I mean, it's all based on negligence, first of all. If somebody's negligent and causes some kind of damage, the county's covered, obviously. If there is something, we're insured for that. So I didn't see that it was that big an issue. And I mean, it's a practical matter. When I look at one of these contracts, you know, I always look at what are the odds there's ever going to be any litigation. I think it would be almost zero. But I still just, I don't like the idea of us agreeing. Aren't we always able to go back and even if we got into a lawsuit and we lost, then we could go back on the A contractor because it was their negligence that caused that. Right. Things, I mean, it would all get sorted out. This kind of thing, we don't want to litigate. Right. If it happens. Just a question. The main thing was the scope of work that they're offering. And a lot of it is just boilerplate contractual language, except for a few things. So we could approve it with a... You could approve it. I mean, I don't know whether, if somebody wanted to talk to Golder and say, can you just strike that part out and just put in to be determined or something? Because I think any court, if there's somebody who went to court, you're going to say that it should be litigated where the contractual work was performed. 
and not all the way across. Not like, you know, when you go to federal court for certain, you shop for a federal judge somewhere all the way across the country, it's going to be favorable to you. Uh, my feeling would be then, counsel, if you feel strongly enough, I would ask that you contact them and, and act on our behalf. I'm not sure it'd be fair to ask uh, Rusty to do that. Right. Um, if you think it's necessary, um, I defer. I, I don't have a... Well, I hate to delay on. this or something like this. I, I just expressed, you know, from a legal point of view, my concerns about this proposed agreement. I mean, having said it, and having worked with Golder for a number of years, I think it's it's okay to go ahead. And, okay. But it's something to keep in mind in the future if we have to do it again to tell Golder. We don't like that language. Well, certainly their representative that was here, I felt very good about the work we've done with him and yeah. all of that. And it's not like we don't know these people that they're coming from Georgia to do this. So. Right. Um, Right. But again, I would defer to the legal. Yeah, no, I, I say it's okay to go ahead and approve it. I just wanted that on the record. Yeah, so you didn't sue to, me someplace. Yeah. Never mind. Just wanted to throw out real quick uh, a brief overview. So this, con this proposal really is a, a contract to have Golder do some engineering work to get us set up where we can, where then Golder can take their findings straight to Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment for their approval so that we can get the whole landfill permitted as Commissioner Camden alluded to earlier. So this is a contract with Golder and Associates to do the engineering work. Um, we have worked with them since we've been on this commission a little bit and uh, I, I feel that we have a pretty good working relationship with those folks. I tell so, them that cost them. Yeah, and this, this uh, plan uh, is not to exceed $115,000, and Goler has said, we will be more than willing to work with you on uh, the financial aspect. If you want to spend X number of dollars, you tell us, and that's how much work we'll do. And then when that's done, if you want to next year have some more work done, you tell us, and we'll do it. We're not going to do the whole thing and send you a bill for $115,000, because we do not have that in the budget for 2020. The, the caveat here is that that right now our county is classified as a plastic liner waiver county and that stays on the table in tw until 2023. If we do not get something done with this landfill before 20, the end of 2023, then any, anything that happens after that will have to be a lined trench or a lined pit or a lined area field, which probably is going to increase the cost of any of those projects by 60, 70 percent. I mean, it's very expensive. Very expensive. So we're motivated to get this done as Meaning soon as we can. Done. Get we the permitting. We don't have to do the work, but we've got to get this property permitted. That work could go into 2015 and right. still be open. Yeah. So and this, part, this actual contract that you're signing, um, there's no money involved yet? Uh, we are signing this that we're committing to up to $115,000 worth of work, engineering work. They believe they can have it done for less than that, but that was their dollar figure that's in this contract. And it won't be billed, I don't think. Look, no, we don't they pay won't, it for it until... They won't do anything until we tell them And it won't want to do. take effect until January when it'll hit the books. So... Yeah. Okay, further discussion? Public comment? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of signing the proposal for the uh, EDOP with Golder Associates say aye. 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 <laughs> uh, Kelly's got something nice to ask. Motion carries. With reservation or comment? No, I'm fine. Okay. Kelly had a question. I hate to sign a contract. I'll comment. I hate to sign a contract with provisions that we're concerned about, but I defer to counsel as being correct and appropriate that we know these people, the likelihood of a lawsuit is slim, but even if there was, it's, it's going to be hard for them to do this in Georgia anyway. We would request to bring it back here. And so that's just my point. I hate to sign an agreement where I know there are provisions that I'm not. Okay. I'm, I'm 
fine with it. I defer. Have you guys had electronically that you could send? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. We'll give it just a second. Put Carmel off for a while. No I'm kidding. He's starting to sleep. I do it right now. It's right at the top of my list of documents, so make it pretty easy. Uh, so let's get this baby signed, and we'll get that back to you. Sign all of them, don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, but sign Golden Associates, too. Um, was a uh, general discussion of the Carmel Group's proposal for broadband. We've invited Mr. John Genovese to come down. Thank you, sir, for being here. We appreciate that. Um, part of me says this conversation could go on for an hour. I hope it doesn't. I'm not saying you're windy. I'm saying there's a lot of stuff to be discussed here. So I'd like to try to limit this to maybe 15 minutes or whatever we think is reasonable. But certainly want to honor your time to drive down here and have a conversation with us. Don't mean to cut you short in that regard. So, um, yes, I was going to ask if somebody wanted to do an overview. Yeah. The overview is um, it, we're talking about a tri-organizational agreement, West Cliff, Silver Cliff, and the county to hire the Carmel Group um, for a total fee of 63000 or 21000 per organization. Sorry, I'll speak up. I apologize. Um, to talk about bringing, and, and Johnny will talk more about this, and I may say it incorrectly because I'm no genius in this area, no genius area, but this in particular, bringing up fiber to the middle mile and then working to bring to where people can actually connect to broadband. Um, it's a long fiber connection that the Carmel Group is talking about. Ultimately, it'll be a $3 million project. No discussion has been made as to how that money or where it's coming from. Um, but I asked John to talk because at the last meeting we had in Westcliff, Westcliff had multiple concerns, multiple questions, and John has the expertise um, to help them decide whether they are going to be part of this three organizational group committee. And I said, I felt that I really would like the county to hear your expertise in this area. So I invited him to come. Thank you for letting me give that overview. You're welcome. So take the lead, sir. Well, so a little background, um, and not on me, but on the fact that um, the first meeting I attended was at Silvercliff, 
on this. That's why I, I heard it. You were there and, and others. And um, it was a surprise um, because making that leap to become a municipal telecom is basically what you're talking about doing um, is a big step. And, of course, then it was the length of this fiber that they're proposing from Walsenburg to Canyon City uh, is is a large length. And um, so Silvercliff has, has done no follow-up with me at all. And I understand they made a decision, and that's fine. Uh, Westcliff has had a lot of discussion on it. I've been asked to attend meetings with them, and I've offered my services to the county, and I appreciate you asking me here uh, to just, one, educate, two, get you to ask questions, and, and hopefully all three government agencies will be on the same page. I think that's important. Um, so with this, you know, I mean, I, I have some, some, some questions here that I, uh, well, there's probably about 17, 18 questions here with little side things. But the, the biggest one, first one I, I say is, are, are you, as BOCC, representing the county area uh, in this proposal, ready to be in the telecom business? So that, that's a question, to, you know, just to keep in the back of your minds. Um, will you run the business, or are you going to contract it out? You know, and, and you had a question. If I may, sir. Um, I believe just for the edification of the other commissioners and anybody in the audience who wants to know, Silvercliff has indicated they are interested in being a provider of internet service, forming an organization part of Silvercliff to provide broadband internet service. Uh, they had obviously opted out of Senate Bill 152, as did Westcliff. So they can become a municipal provider of this service. They are interested in doing that as a revenue generating source. Mm -hmm. I believe Westcliff really has no interest in doing that. So if they agreed to do this, they would most likely contract with a third party to, to become the municipal provider on behalf of the town of Westcliff. Okay. I, I just want to clarify that. And, and well. Let's extend that now to the county. How does the county feel about that? We've had a lot of discussions, and the broadband tower program started it. Right. We, in that instance, said we have no interest in being a, inter, a utility. Okay. And when we signed up to it, uh, you know, because we have a big interest in providing broadband to this county, both to the towns and to the citizens of the county. And so, uh, in the end, yeah, we made a commitment to go ahead and support the tower project if, if it didn't entail our money being spent that should be spent on roads. Yeah. That's how it started. And what the, uh, on this particular thing, we do care about bringing in fiber, not wireless internet into the county. If you get the fiber here, it would do two things from our point of view. It would supply a good feed for those towers to use where, where CenturyLink can't get to the customers as well as a, a way to ensure reliability. Because right now the, our tower plan is based on a wireless from Seacom initially. So the minute Seacom goes down, all the towers go down. So we've got a problem there. And, and, our, and the plan that they presented to us said, well, in the future, we'll maybe several years from now, we'll go after another grant and get a fiber run into the town. So there's always been an intent from our point of view to see the benefit of bringing fiber into the valley for the citizens to have in there you know, where you get more bandwidth so you can push big files down, not 40 megabytes, we're talking gigabytes. So, uh, so in, in that instance, our interest is to have that here available to use for somebody else to connect things with and to use for our municipal needs as a county business organization, our, our justice center, the, the hospitals, the schools, whatever. So, so we don't intend to be a, a utility. I, I don't mean to interrupt. I just, 
Go ahead. I'm done. No, I did, is the Carmel group, is this out of Pueblo? I mean, you... I've done no research okay. on them. I'm just wondering if it's Mark Carmel. It, it is. is Mark Carmel. Mark Carmel. All right. right. And, okay. and then Tom uh, Rivera? Rivera? Rivera. Tom Rivera is, is the engineer yeah. type yeah. person who right. was right. CDOT. Do we know what their track record is for being able to deliver on something like this? No, we do not. All right. That's all I had. I just... And that, yeah. that's the right type of questions right. to be asked. We right. know that. We're... As a so, matter of fact, uh, that's a good point. Let me finish that one because Jay brought that up in that meeting. and. And from our point of view, because we don't know the track record, asking them to make sure the CDOT would provide the rights away and be the match in kind, uh, if that didn't come to pass, then we didn't think it was worth the risk either. Well, I know Mark Carmel from my years living okay. in Pueblo, but beyond that, do I have any other comment right now? So you know him as a city manager or for Fountain or whatever. Yeah, county. Or county. county. Yeah. Well, I'm going to suggest a little bit. Instead of dissecting all of this, I'd like to hear all of what you have to right. say. Okay. If you feel it's appropriate for us to respond to something, then ask us to do that. So, so one of the things that I've been doing uh, is educating. So you're talking about a fiber backbone going from Walsenburg to Canyon City. 144 fibers. And at this point, it's not lit, and meaning there's no equipment on the ends to make it work. So that has to be done. Uh, then there has to be drop-offs. So that is a backbone. Then the next step is to tap onto that and create spurs. That's the mid-mile. So an example, you hit Rosita Road, and you have a, 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 a box there where you pull the fibers out, splice onto it, and take it down Rosita Road to wherever you want to go, maybe all the way to the highway. Sure. Okay. And on the way, you have spots where you're going to drop off service. And that when you go from that Rosita Road point of access to, to homes, that's the last one. Just want to make sure you all understand that that is how it all works. This, at the point when we first started hearing about $9 million to put this fiber in that the Carmel Group is, is proposing with their uh, ace in a hole with CDOT. Okay. There's no access points. There's no mid mile. Nothing else at it. No in the last conversation, they said, well, yeah, but we could do that. And we'll ask for more money. And I guess the money is from the USDA. Okay. So then he says, yeah, we could go ask $15 million if we want and then provide access points you want and whatever else you want, buildings and, and things. And so my, my big point here is, if it's a, uh, an IGA within those three government entities, have you talked? Who, 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 who wants what? What are your needs? What are your wants? And so on. And then have you talked about where you want the fiber access points? Because build it in right away. So I had sent an email out based on that discussion in Westcliff, and I said, okay, well, let's, let's look. It's coming up from Walsenburg. Where's the first stop? Well, where the fiber stops for CenturyLink. They're interested in possibly leasing fiber. So you make an access point by their central office in Gardner. Then you continue, you know, you got your continuance up. Silver West Airport, boy, they could benefit from high bandwidth. They really could. I mean, you talk about adding and growing that airport. If you have that, your, your opportunities to improve that with uh, equipment to make airport not only grow, but safer exponentially. So there's an access point. Then I mentioned Rosita Road and Schoolfield Road, both sides. You could hit a lot of customers going up each side. Okay, Hermit Road going up. You could hit customers that way. In town. Westcliff had a great idea. They said, yeah, we want access right there. We want to go along these poles and provide fiber. Well, that would be mid-mile fiber, okay, but they needed an access point. I says, well, how do you want to do it? Do you want to build a building? Do you want to find a building you're going to be in? And then, then structure it to be a telecom room. Um, or you're going to defer to Silvercliff, and are they going to have a building? And then you'll just, you know, buy into that. Um, 
and then you get to go north. And you guys know the county far better than I do, but there are business parks there where Norm's at. Is that an access point? You know, do you want to go further up Copper Gulch Road? Make that. You know, how far do you want to go? And then this goes into Fremont County, and it starts out in Huerfano County, and it says, well, have you had discussions with those counties on what they want? Because that's, they're going to be your customer. You'll be the owner, you know. And so at this point, do we know that CDOT is guaranteeing to, to lease any fibers? We're getting, given a promise that they're going to give right-of-ways. But what about their, their purchase, CenturyLink? You know, they said, well, the price is right. What is the price? How are you pricing? You know, these are, these are things that I think the, the tri-government team needs to start talking about. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I mean, 144 fibers. Are you going to get one-third? They're going to get one-third? They're going to get one-third? How are you going to divvy it up? Or are you going to just use it as it comes? You know, and just share as one. So those are, are some of the things um, to, to come up with. And, you know, what are your contingencies? What if CDOT doesn't use it? What if CenturyLink doesn't lease onto it? And what are you willing to bear as far as cost to bring it to customers? That's the thing. Now, you've got a large area, the county. So that means your cost to extend fiber off of that backbone to a customer or two towers or whatever is going to be a lot larger than what Silvercliff and Westcliff is going to have to expect. Mm -hmm. So I just, again, throw these things out here for you guys to think about and to discuss. And honestly, I hope that, in, I mean, one of the things Westcliff said, and I'll bring it to you guys here, $21,000 is our buy-in for the plan. Okay, so if we all agreed to buy into the $63,000 plan, which is not engineering, it's just what they say you could do and where it's going to go and what they're going to do to get the money. Um, you could, you know, buy into it at $21,000 and then say, no, we're not going to do it, and you're out $21,000. Okay. You could then potentially do it with somebody else. There has been discussion with the Upper Arkansas COG about doing a very similar plan uh, with bringing fiber. You could minimize it. You could just bring it from Walsenburg to the towns and, and all three then share in on that and have that and then make, or not make, but uh, have uh, an agreement with CenturyLink to tap onto them and distribute uh, out. Now, it, it's, there's a lot of options. Uh, there's a great potential, but I'd like to know that the, each entity is doing their due diligence as far as, what's your expectations? What do you want to do with it? Now, who do you want to serve? What, you know, I've done some looking at Muni Fiber. There's a great one, some good articles that I've seen on the Western Slope. Uh, it's called Region 10. You might want to look it up. And right now, they, I think they've got fiber now to Nuclo, nice little town. But their driver was <coughs> to bring in businesses. And most of them, their driver is to bring in businesses. And businesses means growth. And I know that that is not necessarily a focal point. You know, growing the county uh, is not a big, you know, focal point here. And um, so if, you know, those are successful municipal fiber organizations, government organizations, and they take it on, and they did it solely for businesses, and you're doing it, what I'm hearing is, broadband to your citizens, that's a different nuance here. Right. So, Great you know, point. I, again, um, I keep saying this, I'll help in any way, shape, or form. I've written agendas, 
like for the CenturyLink meeting. Uh, and I understand you haven't received anything from CenturyLink that was mentioned in the document I produced and what the meeting said about deliverables. You know, show us what you've got and all this. Westcliff hasn't got it as of yesterday. Mike said they haven't got anything from CenturyLink. My, my point here is that with all of these, you have to have somebody driving it. You have to take the time and you have to have that person staying on them, you know. I haven't heard from Tim Kunkelman for, you know, end of September, I think. And I asked him, point blank, oh, a couple more weeks and I'll have all that stuff out. Well, it's about three, four weeks now. Yeah, we met with him as well, and uh, he did provide data to our IT GIS person. He developed a map. He, he being Vernon Roth, put on the locations of the fiber that CenturyLink is plowing in, with the exception of what they're doing on the state highways. He was only Vernon only showed on his map what was going on on the county road. Okay. Do you know what subdivisions are going to be? Uh, of, yeah, yeah, no yeah. idea where they're no. going to put their... I know one thing. They're not going to uh, the southeast, south of Rosita, to uh, East Cliff area. That's not being done this year. I know that they had some down towards Antelope Valley, towards Cuerno Verde. I've seen that. I've seen Blumenau get all new stuff. Um, and, and I understand that <coughs> to the north. Uh, they've, they've put a good amount in and, and feeding different areas. The reason to ask is to discern who gets it this year, what's your plans for next year, and what's your decision factors here? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Thank you um, for your input. I have a very bad taste in my mouth over this Carmel Group proposal. I've always thought, what are you buying for your amount of money? What are you getting? Mm -hmm. And why am I giving you $63,000 for something that I don't know what I'm going to do with it, even if I got it? Okay. I understand Silvercliff is pretty excited about being in the telecom business. Westcliff is not. I think the county from discussion that I'm not going to speak for my other commissioners is probably not interested in being in the telecommunication business. I've previously said I support fiber in the, in the county and the towns because it's good for our citizens. I really have a very poor taste in my mouth for this particular group personally and the plan that they're presenting. And the reason I say personally I kind of feel like I'm dealing with a snake, say a snake oil well, salesman. I mean, when at Silvercliff, when it was first presented, I said, well, if you're so sure it's going to happen, then put it in your contract, but if it doesn't, we don't have to pay you. And he did, which surprised me. But I don't know what's going to happen if we hire them. I don't know what the county's going to get out of it. I don't know what the towns are going to get out of it. This is just an ill-thought-out plan, in my opinion, with no deliverables. And once the plan is purchased for 63 grand, we're going to have another strategic plan-type document that's going to go in a file somewhere. And what's going to happen is the people in the telecom business, when they're good and ready, will bring fiber into this area, and we will all get our, our internet. And I read a couple days ago that is it Elton Musk or what's his for whatever? Elon. Elon, Elon Musk, Musk. Thank you. Is planning low orbit satellite, in high speed internet broadband. The latency issues can be resolved because they're low. I don't know. But what I'm trying to say is, this plan is driving me nuts. I am. I cannot support it and unless unless John. And that's why I asked you to come. Tell me that this is good for the county, good for the citizens of Custer County, and I'll change my mind because I'm not an expert in this area. So here's, here's my feel on this. Um, I think the concept is great. I share your opinion on uh, the salesmanship of Mark Carmel. Um, 
I don't like that it came on suddenly and then you've got a deadline, right? The USDA has money, and I know that they funded so much of uh, broadband fiber, especially to the areas for ranching and farming. Um, on the western slope, they were on that uh, region 10 thing. Uh, a rancher commented that now he can track his cattle and not lose them because they put the chips in them and and they know where all that. He says, I, he goes, before this I lost two um, breeding cows. He goes, that's a big expense. He goes, if I don't lose another one because of this, it's worth it to me. Okay, but they had a plan. I don't see a plan other than, you know, and I'm not privy to anything with Silvercliff because they have not asked me to attend anything. And I, I don't just force myself on it. You, you guys ask me, I'll give opinions. This is tough. I think that the right concept is there to bring fiber in. And if you're going to put fiber in, might as well put 144 in, right? But the fact is, is that it's going through two other counties. What's their position, right? <clears throat> what do you, you know, do you know how you're going to charge? If you don't want to be in a business, are you set to contract it out to somebody, right? Have you investigated that? Uh, there's there's a lot of open end questions here, and one of the things I asked too is, what if you want to back out? What's your back out plan? What's your contingencies if you commit to it and things don't go the way you want? Those are things in my mind that you got to be asking. And I'll just ask this one: Has Silvercliff, Westcliff, mayors, trustees, and the BOCC met and discussed this? Not yet. And now, let me talk. We've asked to do that. Yeah, we are. Here, here's, 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 here's the reason. Here's the process. I'm frustrated. Okay. The answer is not yet. The answer is you're right. We're, we have to do that. And that is in the cards. We have to do that. And that's what we're. What I took up for this board to go make sure we had a meeting with all three entities to discuss a lot of the things you're talking about. Okay. Um, and to, to understand how we're going to interact together and what we're going to do. You know, I'm just outlined a couple things. Silvercliff does want to have a utility. They want to make a plan. We want it for other reasons. Uh, you know, the growth is an issue, but the citizens that come here want to have a, a broadband capability to have their private businesses out in boondocks, uh, and so it helps facilitate that. So it's worth looking at. Uh, I personally met with Sally Clark, the USDA person, about six months ago uh, in June, June. As a matter of fact, her... Uh, Sally Clark. This is 4th of June. June. And uh, she has a, a right-hand uh, man that's involved with this. Uh, actually, it's a lady, uh, Amy Mund. And so, and then, and they work a lot with uh, Mike Brazil, uh, who is the uh, broadband guy, employment on the broadband deployment board for the state. So, the what the way I look at this. Everything you say is 100% right. You, you're, you're down. You're at that level. You're an engineer, right? No, I'm really or not an engineer, you? but I've, you? I've. You're a broadband guy. Uh, I've, I've been in. I started as a technician. Okay. Okay. Well, Worked my way up. I'm, I'm a manager, project manager of projects like this. Yeah, and that should. I, I can see that, and that's very good. You know, I'm a program manager and an engineer. And have managed a lot of programs too. Everything you say is correct. The first step, and what the way the USDA is looking at this whole picture, is getting the backbone into the rural areas, and they have the money to do that. And uh, and in this case, they're looking at a loop, like you mentioned, and, and back. They're also looking at going up the Arkansas River to tie in uh, Shady County, Fremont, and all those. So there's and there's a separate broadband board that involves the. Council of Governments and their and their representatives that are discussing what's the strategic plan for the broadband uh, for the counties. So, so from our point, uh, county point of view, this is just me speaking. Is the this particular involves spending the money to get the grant first of all, put together the business plan that says here's what it is and here's what we're going to do and here's what we need, and that would include uh, the. the Junction points. How are you going to bring in here? What are you going to do so that you're not going to have to reinvent the wheel later on? And, and pay extra money. In. That's right. Mm -hmm. 
And so that's part of, this is not a plan that uh, it's, we need to develop the implementation plan. This is the plan to get the grant, right? That's what this is all about. And I have the same reservations about Mark Carmel and how he sells things. I mean, he comes across, he tries to overdo it. But I do know that uh, the CDOT guys are serious. They want to participate. They do want to have the ability to have broadband capability in the highways uh, to get their, what, you know, they monitor and get the weather and all that stuff. And, uh, and they, uh, and, and I do know Tom Rivera has got the expertise and he's got the connections uh, to right now. So from my point of view, it, if we don't make an effort and get the money that's available, and, and Sally Clark wants to use Custer County as a perfect example of a rural country, a county that's small, that can take advantage and get the broadband in to show the other counties where it's going to be a lot harder. Plus, we get one step up. Uh, we, we tie this loop in, and it allows the Arkansas River to have some, those counties to have some reliability and have an access point to bring it further out and then have Sally Clark be able to justify spending money with them. Because in some places, she's not going to let it cause a county that's very hard to get to. I mean, it's going to cost millions of dollars to get it into Park County, uh, you know, up some gravel road. From a distance like that, so we're lucky from that point of view. So I think we need to work together. We've got to have the discussion. We've got to understand what what is it going to take to get Sally Clark to to put the fiber in, my, and then as part of that, what's the plan to connect it? We got to be able to have the access points. We got to be able to connect. The, you got to light them up, mm -hmm. and then you got to have them. Uh, what, what you're going to do with it once you do that? Uh, and that's where you put the put the plan together that says if I've got that and I've got the uh, ar the architecture set and the, uh, the actual hardware available then that's when you let people buy. I, I asked him Kunkel, would you t if we had the fiber would you lease it and he said absolutely because he told me that person yes if the price is right I don't know it, no, that's what he told I'll me. tell you what sure it is you know why and he's, he's got proof now he knows what it costs to drag a fiber in hmm? if that fiber is already there why would he go and try to drag a fiber up out of Pueblo? To, to, because right now they're limited. They're talking megabytes, not gigabytes of capability. You know, I mean, we're talking gigabytes now. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and there's going to be some fiber to, to lease. I'm not interested in trying to get a business for the county to lease fibers out. I'm interested in getting the capability to have somebody come and say, is there something available somewhere? And, and I'll come and buy a thing mm -hmm. uh, as a potential, as long as the county isn't going to lose any money doing it. Right now, the matching funds on this is the, the rights away that CDOT will get us. But right now, from what I see, I don't know what the county's uh, risk is yet until we get them to, to actually put together the program that says Sally Clark's going to dig it in. And if Sally says, if you don't get it to, in a certain way, is there some limitations on this grant? I don't know. I don't know enough about it yet. Go ahead, Jay. I just don't feel the county needs to be in the business of internet. I think what the county needs to do is give incentives to the people who are in that business, who know how to do it, who understand what is necessary to do, instead of, for example, maybe use of our right-of-way, tax incentives. We can encourage companies whose business it is to bring broadband to the citizens of an area. This backbone is great, but it's just gonna be a fiber if it ever happened. I agree with you, this is just an ill, in my opinion, at this point, from what I've read, this is not a well thought out, well conceived agreement that I'm willing to put money into personally. I need to know what, the, what we're going to receive, how I'm gonna benefit the taxpayers of Custer County, whose money I would spend for this plan, how it will benefit them. I would much rather go to even an obscure company that's not here ready and say, take this project on and here's what the county will help you do. We will give you access to any right-of-ways that we have. We will give you tax incentive for some period of time. We will do so. But that's their business. That's not our business. 
Right. I'm just, I'm very concerned. And another thing, Bill, and, and please don't take this wrong, but I've been to many, many meetings on this. I'm still waiting for the three. So am I. Meeting that you, it that kept you getting put, put off together. because the tap, I can't get it done until the wet, the Westcliff delayed all that because they wanted to keep studying it. They, they asked for that, not me. Okay, I was under the impression, I, I, you know, I'm very intimate with Westcliff. I know you are, and I've gone I to Paul say, three where is this and three? he keeps saying, i got to get in my board. My board's dragging my feet. The, you know, okay, well, so it's, now, it's not really the way I heard it, but I, I well, believe every word you're saying. I heard it slightly differently, but people will say what they what? feel is in their best interest. I get that. That's fine. But I just have this overall concept of, you know, do I want to get into the shipbuilding so, business? So we need to, okay, it's so, not our business. So the reason I asked for this to be on this meeting here, got tired of, of waiting because uh, we waited for Paul, and then Paul went on vacation. He gave his mayor pro tem the, the job of putting together, and he wanted to delay it until Paul got back. And so, right. so we couldn't get a meeting together to get the right people that can make a decision to in the in the room together. So that's the next step. And I didn't want to let drag on any further because there is there's no deadline per se. There is money that the pot gets eaten up as I'm, the longer I'm sorry. we wait. I, this deadline, I, yeah, that's not, I agree with the, yeah. Mr. Genevieve. Is Genevieve or Genevieve? Genevieve. Genevieve. Thank you. I, don't I heard it differently this morning. I'm thinking, yeah, I've always called, called you Genovese. Yeah. yeah, well, okay. And in Italy, it's Genovese. Okay. There you go. <laughs> anyway. Genovese, so. But we're not there. But we're um, not there. So. I, I am just, I, I just don't want to be held to a deadline it, to approve a plan that I am just not comfortable yeah, I'm not holding anybody to a deadline. I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting that, first of all, you got a partner out there that wants to get money coming in soon. That's not a deadline. Silver clear. Uh, the money is available in a pot, and it, and it gets dwindled, dwindled down, and that is I a agree. chance that if we, if we wait and drag it two years from now, the money's gone, the technology's gone by, and blah, blah, blah. So I just am interested in following through. So and so that's why I wanted to get it done yeah. now. And, and so... Uh, one and the reason, one let me tell you the last reason. I don't want to do this tower thing if it's going to be a half-assed way of going about it and, and I don't like the fact that they're they don't have a way to connect those towers to anything and this is an opportunity to be move that if, if we are going to follow through with that project but really and truly does this plan that we're paying sixty three thousand dollars for we being Custer County the entities is that going to get fiber to the towers and I will say to you absolutely not what it is, it's a plan on something that someone can come up, Mr. That's Genovese correct. could come up without paying $63,000. You'll do it for a lot less? How's he uh, gonna <laughs> Jay, he's not going to bring I'll the fiber up from Wetmore and bring it in here for less. We don't know what the plan is because we haven't been able to get to it yet. That's the problem. We've got to get together and decide whether we want to to have a fiber into this valley okay. and then get the plan. Well, uh, and let me ask this question. Are you good with going forward with this with the concept of if I build it they will come no no. so the other thing is if you build it and it's going to take 18 to 24 months minimum to get that fiber in once that all the contracts are signed and you pick and somebody picks up a, a vendor or two or three um, it's going to take you a couple of years probably to engineer and build uh, to the towers and to other ones. And then you'll have to probably, you know, they did a pretty good job on getting the propagation maps done and locations and everything for the towers. And they cut it down, figured, oh, we'll start small. Well, now you can say, well, we got the bandwidth to go anywhere. Where do you want towers? Where are the underserved areas from CenturyLink and so on? You can maybe grow that and redo it, and then make your engineering right. plan to bring fiber exactly. to it. Exactly. So, but that's again, that's another so, year or two. But we've got to take the first step. We've got to get together and decide if we want to sponsor and go after a grant as a community, not just as the county, as all of us together. Agreed. And that yeah. has to happen. Agreed. And that's what I've been pushing for. And you and, get a meeting, and, and I'll show and up. Unfortunately, and I, I hope you do. 
and I, and I uh, unfortunately, Silvercliff is, is pushing hard. Yeah. And, you know, we've been talking to them. They have a vision. They have a vision. They want to come. And I would love to have Silvercliff meet that vision. Well, I'd like to hear the vision. Well, <laughs> you know, and I think you would too. I will tell you, they want to be in the tele. They want to do it. They want to be in the internet distribution business and be in charge of the right. of handling the internet sales. To, to they want to wow. be in that business. Wow. They want to be a utility. And and that that doesn't mean they'll have their guy go out and wire it themselves. They want to hire somebody. They want to own of and subcontract so out they, and manage they of want the to utility be in that business. They see it as a they see it as a save. One, One of the saviors of Silvercliff bringing a ton of that's money right. doing this. And they may be 100% right. I'm not knocking their plan. I'm not either. But that's not something I believe the county's interested in, and I really am not sure Westcliff is in it, but I can't speak for them. Right. But, but it sounds like Westcliff would love to see fiber strung through those alleys to hit all the businesses, to hit uh, the, the residences there. But the thing is, is that I see a reluctance to be an owner. They want to help facilitate. That's right. And that's where I came well, from. We as a county, sure. county somebody's got to do it. Give tax incentives, that. Right. encouragement. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and, and you know, I mean, you look at it. you look at other things out here. You've got uh, Rye Telephone. They've been around a long time, and they've got nothing but fiber around. What's their interest in maybe meeting up with us? Like what? There's a lot. We can go on. There's a lot. what if. So let's not do everywhere. That. Yeah. Exactly. The other unintended benefit. Everybody's overlooks in the West Cliff, and I brought it up to uh, before um, this Mr. Bispado when I was discussing Jim, it Jim, Jim is that uh, if West Cliff doesn't have to go out and actively sell utility mm -hmm. on their poles, but they will benefit by the fact that the, the rest of the county has got big business capability and uh, and bringing in revenue that way and buying stuff in the town of West Cliff. So that's why I'm with Tom when he made a statement that says Westcliff has skin in the game no matter whether they mm -hmm. whether they they should have skin in the game, whether they're going to be a utility or not is irrelevant because it benefits the county and the towns. <laughs> more tax revenue, more sales tax, more whatever. So it, and that's why the, the U.S. government is funding these projects because they it, it for the benefit of the, the the citizens of the United States. Westcliff Meats could benefit from this with their internet sales. There's so many uh, benefits that could be, but have you tied them together? And that's where the yes, but that's the next step. That you've got yep. to get started somewhere. Though, yeah. John. So I hope I helped. Well, thank it you. Brings up Appreciate a lot of good that. points. Um, thank you. I would throw out a suggestion for the four of us. I would certainly like to have a workshop with Mr. John. Uh, I'm thinking on October the 31st in the afternoon, because we'll be in town, we have a BOCC meeting, to dig in the weeds a little deeper about what we just talked about today. Just with Don't this. need a hundred other people and their opinions there. I'd like to have a long, drawn-out conversation, educationally speaking, uh, ab about what we're talking about. I've got a hundred questions. I wasn't going to ask them today, because we don't have the time. The time. But I... I certainly would commit to uh, two or three hours in the afternoon of the 31st if you would be available and these two gentlemen are willing. Well, I was uh, going to attend the meeting, and I know I'm around, okay. so, um, yes. Just schedule. I think it's a wonderful idea. Just scheduling. Um, that afternoon is in the affordable housing. Lots that they want to buy in Silvercliff. Alternatively, would Friday the first work? I'm what time is that meeting, sir? What time is that? The meeting is at two thirty. It's at two thirty. I'm not available Friday. Yeah, nor am I. I've got a flight out of Denver at okay. two thirty. Let's do it that day, and I'll tell them. Good luck with your house. On which day now we're talking about? The thirty. Well, I'm suggesting the thirty-first. Yeah, there's only cost to bill okay. <coughs> <clears throat> Where's the blank suit? Uh, we have a BOCC meeting. Typically, those are done by noon. Give us an hour to eat. Maybe meet at one thirty. Fudge that a little. That's why I work. 
Meanwhile, I'm going to schedule a meeting with the three uh, municipalities at some point is after that. So, so let me just ask. Maybe this isn't a good idea. Maybe this topic should be over. One thirty. That work for you, Mr. John. One thirty. Yes. On Thursday. On Thursday, October thirty-first. Yes. Okay. Sir. We should be cleared up. Let me check one thing real quick that I may have overlooked. Thanks for helping us all. By the way, that Elon Musk thing is putting in 8,000 satellites. So, yeah, I mean, and that, and remember I brought that up to begin with? Well, we all did. The way in the future. Yeah, we yeah, said by the time, this is such a long time, by the time this is done, by the time, by the time we have it done, this could be new technology. Nope. You know, be so the only problem is they're still blocking this. Volunteer. Yeah, that's the concern. In your background, I just don't want to be the telecommunications board. Board. I don't want to be throwing money down a rat hole. Yeah, I mean, I, as far as I'm concerned, anybody's welcome to attend that workshop. I just don't want to get into uh, members of the town board, Silvercliff, wanting to get that meeting probably will happen extraneous to what my intent is of meeting with you. <laughs> the 47 years worth of experience. I don't know. I, I couldn't fill that cup with I, I, what I yeah, I'm know. not an engineer, but I love a whiteboard. Okay. <laughs> right, Bill? <laughs> All right. Very good, sir. Well, thank you for coming down this afternoon. Appreciate it. And maybe uh, as that, as the calendar goes along, we can develop some questions to ask you specifically, hey, yep. based on our conversation with Wetmore, what about this? What about that? What do you see? Um, and we'll just kind of have some time to sit and talk. Yeah. Okay. Sounds, Great. Thanks. Sounds like a good idea. Appreciate it. All right. Very good. Uh, Ms. Kara, can you make sure that gets on the agenda? Uh, let's call that a broadband discussion workshop. Okay. It's not on the agenda, though. No, it will not be on the agenda. It yeah, goes at the bottom of the posted agenda okay. that we're going to meet in the right. afternoon. We need to post the workshop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you, sir, again. Appreciate your time. Uh, next item of business, consideration of a culvert request uh, from a citizen of the county. Uh, Mr. Hyde is here, I think, to have a conversation here. with about that. So uh, let's delve into that. So this request came in, I want to say about a week ago, is that correct? Yeah. Anyway, the individual lives in one of the subdivisions and it's on Copper Gulch, right near Highway 69. And there's a subdivision road that has that gives him access to his property. Plus, he's got access off the highway. This is a golf course. What do they call that subdivision? I don't even know what they call it. Is it Pardon? It's, that's the golf, it's what the it's the end of the golf course. Oh, that subdivision. Saint An it's Saint Andrews, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the subdivision. Forget the name. So anyway, Roger went out and looked at the property and realized that he's got an access off of the subdivision road as well as 69. And it's sitting, it's written in our rules for driveway access uh, uh, requests on permits that if a person does have access on the subdivision road, plus another additional access, we're so limited to two. So, but he's wanting, a, he's wanting another one off of the copper mill. Besides the uh, subdivision access in the world, so anyway, that. Um, can you restate what you just said? Not restate it, say it again. Repeat, Repeat what you said. You have a policy? Yeah, it's kind of a, uh, a policy at the Red Bridge Park. What happened to Tom is I could give you a little bit of history and I'll, I'll, I'll summarize yeah, it. Yeah, we need quickly. the history. <laughs> Dion's ago, years ago. I'm going to say 30 or 40 years ago, um, people were putting in driveway accesses to their properties and things like that. Well, it, they were putting them in in, in uh, unsafe places and, um, you know, on blind curve, blind hills and things like that. Well, long story short, the county stepped in the Road and Bridge Department and whoever was on the board at the time and said, man, we got to regulate this because they're putting them in, in unsafe places and bad places and so on and so forth. 
So anyway, that's why they decided to come up with some kind of regulations. So that's what I've got in front of me now. And it's been tweaked over the years. But uh, I know I initially, Roger was telling me that the county, the Red Bridge Department, if the landowner would purchase the culvert to put in, then the Red Bridge Department actually installed it. Well, it got to the point where they were overwhelmed with installing culverts. They didn't have the time to do it, so they had to do away with that. But then they came up with this um, agreement that if the landowner had the culvert installed, then the Ruben Ridge Department would assume responsibility from that point forward. Meaning you clean them so that they don't erode or flood the roads? Yeah, but you know, honestly, I've seen culverts that have gotten plugged up and they're really not affecting the road to the, to the point where it's bothering us that much. Um, which, go ahead. I'm sorry, may I interrupt you? Um, you said you had a regulation or agreement. Uh, was that approved by the county or is that a road or bridge mandate? Oh, as far as I know, I think it was just kind of within the park. Okay, so it's they, not they realized that, you know, they needed these regulations uh, because of the size of the culvert they were going in and things like that. So and it's really a road or bridge business decision as opposed to a county approved? I believe so. Okay. Based on what I'm hearing and seeing. Do you have an address for that, sir? Uh, it's 35 near yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, let me look at the map again. I see Have you read it? And I asked Roger, I said, what, how, how did it come to be that they just limited the two accesses on their property? He said, well, because of the fact that uh, the county had to maintain the culverts, if we let them to ha allowed them to have as many as they wanted, that's just going to increase our work. So that's something I missed. It's going to give us that. They said two accesses per landowner? Yeah, per, per parcel. So a guy could have uh, 600 acres and only have two entrances into it? Well, that was another question for me. I asked Roger about that, and he said, well, with the way it stays in here, but that doesn't seem feasible. That's not right. Or if I, it's, uh, I don't think so either. If it's a one-acre lot, he can have two, ro two. Yeah, exactly. So, that I mean, so I heard you say that he had two accesses currently. Is that correct? Yeah, the one in the sub off the subdivision one. is considered one, and then the one off of Highway 61 is considered the second. What? He already has one off of? Well, it's got subdivision roads, is my understanding. Mirrorfield is a subdivision road. He just has road. one access. Yeah. Well, and they consider that one in the, in the uh, policy. That is one. But Pardon? That's just at his place. Right. But he, that is so good. it's two because his, road, his driveway is at, uh, 100 yards away from the road? Or something. I don't get why that counts. Yeah, and it's not something that I necessarily agree with, but I mean, that's the way it's written here. And I've got this if you'd like to take a look. Would, yes, sir, please. Um, yeah, I, I guess I'm still questioning the two acts. You have copies for everybody here? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you know, the uh, subdivision road access is what they consider. Right, that, yeah. for that whole subdivision, obviously, Mirfield and... Uh, so that's one. In, well, and then we'll one, the one off of 69. Does he have one off of 69? No, he doesn't have one. In fact, the subdivision does. He doesn't. Well, uh, He's it was not bordering 69. Well, that was my understanding that the property bordered 69 and he had an access to that, but that's not the case. So there is his. This is Copper Gulch. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh, mm -hmm. I wonder. I wonder See, if this, this is, is Mirfield. I don't know why am I. Mm -hmm. And so now here's his little driveway off the subdivision. This road. should be mm -hmm. his primary access. To get that. That's one. Yeah. So he wants one over here. Well, and then I was told they had a second one over here no. somewhere off of Copper Gulch I already. Don't and then he that. to the north, and then he wanted to go off the no. north. He only he, there's that his property line. I went out there and drove it. He's, yeah. That's a fence. There's no driveways going into. It. Yeah. Yeah, help yourself. I was struggling running that upside down There's back. No culverts on there. It's scary. Yeah, okay. Out. So, well, I'm gonna uh, see. I wanted to. When I spoke to Roger about this, he indicated that, generally speaking, he had not seen this yet. But mm -hmm. he indicated that there probably should be ingress and egress on most normal properties. Mm -hmm. Not 600 acres, not a quarter of an acre, but just a normal property. Mm -hmm. um, I struggle a little bit with the, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but if there's an attitude or an opinion that we don't want any more culverts because we don't want to do any more work, 
I struggle with that. That's what road and bridge gets paid to do by the taxpayer. I'm not saying you said that. I'm just throwing this out here. Mm -hmm. If it, if it, because of topography, whatever, just makes absolutely no sense to put a culvert in there, I get that. I understand that. I don't want to get up into the road and bridges business, mm -hmm. but there has to be an appeal process, right? I would think so, Which, yeah, and I think that's where that's I think that's where we're at. Uh, Rod, he, he went to Roger, Roger told him no, mm -hmm. and then he contacted Commissioner Canada, apparently. Mm -hmm. So I assume that's kind of an appeal process. They told me no, I want to ask the commissioners what you think. So in that regard, I think it's appropriate for the commissioners to be somewhat involved. Mm -hmm. um, if he has ingress and egress already, and he wants to add another culvert to make it easier for him or whatever, I would defer back to Road and Bridge. Mm -hmm. I told Roger I would drive out there, look, I've been by that property a hundred times, never paid attention. Mm -hmm. I got wrapped up yesterday in another deal. I didn't get out there. I can't speak to it. I was told that you were doing the dirt work yeah. there. Is that true? Actually, um, or the septic tank? The septic tank. You're doing the septic and, tank and on the this property. Rob White is doing the dirt work. So, but right here, there's no culverts on that stretch. Well, and it, um, I would have thought if they, if Roger didn't see a second access, that he would have granted this the ability to put in one there. But well, I think he was saying if there's a subdivision access through a subdivision is all I had Roger told me. Uh -huh. Then they can't have a. Well, on it. I assumed the access road, and I spoke with the gentleman that's got the property. I told him I'd look into it, and I had uh, scheduled uh, tentatively a time to possibly go out there and meet with him, and <coughs> things came up, and I wasn't able to make it. Otherwise, I'd look at the property to get a better feel for what was going on out there. But, you know, if that sub the subdivision road comes off of 69, and if he indeed doesn't have anything on the copper, then I don't see a problem. But... I think there's an underlying issue there. Yeah. And, and really, from his point of view, that's a, a, he, he, he right perched now. on a hill. He he's got to have, have access to bring a hay truck in, and, mm -hmm. and you know, it's a curve in there, and it's just, it just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. it gets, and it's a steep hill. Yeah. So I don't. Well, I, I would move to postpone this, uh, I'm going to say until October 31st. To allow you an opportunity to go look at it, maybe the commissioners want to yeah, look I'd at like it. Look uh, I understand he's building a barn down the slope from his house. He'd like to access that barn from the, from, from Copper, Copper Gulch Road. Uh, and everything he told me made sense, perfect yeah. sense. Now, something that I would like to mention, to the board, uh, at least to give consideration to, is this year we've so far issued 48 access permits. And Roger said of those 48, there's 60 percent of them that are going to require culverts. So that's going to be 29 culverts get put in this year, 29 for more for us to maintain. And if last year and the previous years have been on track, then in the last uh, last three years, that's like 87 culverts. It did in addition to what we've already got right. to maintain. I'm not a big proponent of maintaining these driveway access permits for these. Uh, parcel owners. Honestly, I think it ought to be left to the individual to maintain them because we we simply don't have the time. What does maintaining mean to you? Well, if they get plugged, we have to go out and flush them out. If the ditch gets full, I'm sorry, Jim, go ahead. I've got a major problem here. I'm thinking the homeowner should be responsible for the cost of cleaning the culvert. Now, whether That's they do it said. themselves or they you assess them the fee, whatever your organization feels appropriate, but I think if a culvert needs to be cleaned, it's your decision that we are making a decision for you, homeowner, because our culvert's on, our, on county property, mm -hmm. and we're going to clean it, and we're going to invoice you X amount of dollars for that service. Yeah, and it's not a matter of money. It's just the fact that we simply don't have time to maintain them. I and mean, people get disgruntled with me and the department, but, I mean, it, We've gone out and we've diligently tried to clean as many culverts as we can in the last six or eight weeks, knowing that winter's, you know, knocking on our door. And we just, well, I've got a long list of them that need to be cleaned out. We just simply don't have the time to do it. And um, I've seen a lot of landowners or property owners, I'll go out there with a shovel and they'll keep the ends cleaned on it. And that'll help carry the water through it and keep them clean. If they'll even do something as simple as that. And these parcel owners are, you know, they're a up in age and they find a way to get it done so but I just I don't like the fact that 
people think that we're not doing our job by getting out there and cleaning them. We, we, I'd like to be able to spend eight weeks straight doing it, but right. we simply don't that, have that that can't do probably that. for another meeting, but you got a good point. And it's some, a policy is a policy, and a policy always, there are exceptions to every rule, and, and mm -hmm. they're dependent upon it, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Um, I think, sorry, go ahead. I think the third bullet on this document you gave us kind of addresses the situation here. Mm -hmm. Properties accessible from a subdivision road must be access accessed from the subdivision road unless unusual circumstances exist. In my opinion, if, if you went out there and you thought there was an unusual circumstance that warranted another uh, access, then as a commissioner I would certainly listen to that. If you come back and told me as a commissioner there's no unusual circumstances out there. He can access his barn from, from his house or whatever, then I would take that under consideration as well. Uh, but it comes down to that underlying scenario that we're going to be forced with every year, and that's growth. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, This year it's 29 culverts. Next, next year it might be 59 culverts. The other thing is, and I talked with Roger about this, if we approve his, I'm going to call it appeal, just between Highway 69 and the southern property boundary of what was St. Uh, Andrew's Golf Course, we could have four, three other culverts request to go in there. Because so I think we need to be careful about that too. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because the neighbor's going to say, "Well, hell, I don't want to go all the way up through my subdivision road. I'm going to put a cover." I did the same thing yeah. in 1997. I went to the county and asked them, "Do I have to go through all that subdivision road, or can I put a covert in?" And I was granted the permission to put a covert in. I get it. Mm -hmm. I know why they don't want to deal with that subdivision. Sure, it's a it's a matter of convenience, and I understand that too. And you know, I want to be able to help people out. And if it's reasonable to put the culvert where he's talking about, and if there isn't a second access to a property besides a subdivision, then I can I can. Yeah, I I don't believe there is, but like I say, I didn't go back out there, and I told Roger I would. So, um, so I'll move to postpone until October thirty one. I'll second. And then seconded to postpone the uh, agenda item of considering the uh, culvert request yeah, on Copper Gulch Road uh, for lot number 35 on Mirfield Drive. Is there any discussion? Public comment? Hearing none, proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. I'll give that back to you for your file. Okay. Well, I, yeah. Or you guys can keep them. Yeah, Where'd you find you, that, Gary? And then Pardon? if you don't mind. Where did, find that? Where did I find these? Yeah. Well, we keep them right Got in. That, huh? that, oh, that's part of your permit. Question. No, this is just the permit itself. Ratify this as a county policy? Um, or is just a I'd like to scan that so we can I agree. Policy policy. Got to right. Well, if policy. Should the county yeah. verify their policy? Right. Or should we just let them make their own that policy? On, uh, yeah, if they have a policy that they're going to set up barricades around an excavation site along a county road, do we need to adopt that? I don't think so. Is it a one-time thing uh, or is it an ongoing yeah. process is the question. So, so how does he appeal? A guy can have a, there's no appeal process. Some there. course of appeal at some level. So I will certainly do my homework between now and then. I'll give you an opportunity to go look at that property as well. Uh, I think historically Roger's been the county culvert dude. road and bridge person that was kind of the contact person for culverts. Is that a fair statement? Absolutely, and I've let him continue that because it yeah. well, it's worked out well. He had two concerns. One was precedence, uh -huh. and two, he felt like truly the installation of a culvert where this request is is going to end up putting a big high berm to get even onto the property and down to the to the road i don't know that but that was two of the concerns he expressed to me so and of course how many culverts we've been putting in and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing but if if it's a responsibility for the county to do that 
whatever is fair, right, and reasonable, then we have to do it. That's what we owe our citizens who buy property here. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, I'm, I don't have a problem with hanging the hat on that number three bullet of unless there's an unusual circumstance. Okay. So, so if we could ask Ms. Kara to scan, and if you have a copy, Bill, you want to keep that one. If we could get Kara a copy. Um, you got an extra one? You have an extra yeah. one with the... Thank you. Which you can scan that in and send that to us. We'll have it electronically. We appreciate it. All right, sir, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming down to... policy. Uh, Why are we even involved in Because this gentleman appealed it, basically. Got it to them. We're not responsible if we haven't they ratified didn't have these rules process. and regulations or whatever this is that they put in place. It's theirs, not ours. Well, I don't think it's any different than this gentleman was here about the property. He he came to the commissioners to ultimately. But we have a policy on that. We have a pol commissioners have a policy that planning and zoning will make a recommendation to us. That's our policy. We have no policy on this. Well, see, that to me, there should be. I mean, we're responsible for it. I mean, if if, uh, if Road and Bridge has something they're doing, and it's how you control whether it's right or wrong, you know, so ultimately, we're responsible for the Road and Bridge guys. They work there for us. Lies exactly they, my that's issue. why the point I'm needs to have an issue out of it, but I do think I question whether organizations should make policies that we're going to enforce or not enforce, that we're not a party to the policy. Well, and well, rules, uh, well if I we have may be. It might have happened 35 years see. ago. But then we ought to ratify but, it. I don't know. So it's a policy through road and bridge. Mm -hmm. I agree that there needs to be an appeal process in that policy. Right. Yeah, and maybe it should be worded on here, too. Yeah. And, you know, if someone, I don't know, I, it wouldn't be a bad idea if someone does uh, have a disagreement with the findings, you know, say for instance, Roger, the person that takes his place, maybe think, you know, it should be worded on the good that they can right. this way, and then I'll take a look at it. Right. And then, you know, if I discover the same thing and agree, yeah. then they can visit the Well, yeah. well, well and that. maybe between now and the 31st, you could look at revising that or, or bring some proposed revisions that we could look at as well. Or I just don't. I have no problem doing my job. I don't want to overstep my job yes, either. Sir. I'm trying to be respectful for that. Yeah. But if that's yes, what... Because we do need to be uniform right. and listen and do what's right, right for everybody. See, we don't do the planning and zoning's job. We listen to recommendations. The same right. thing ought to occur here. Yeah. Because I'll tell you, what's to stop a guy, and this is not, you're not doing it, but there's per, you could have a perception that you don't want to do it because you don't want to do the work. You know, and how does the guy resolve that if the if your appeals level is at that level? <laughs> you know, you can't go beyond right. that. Yeah, I I understand what you're saying, Commissioner Prince. I don't disagree. Um, I don't know that we that the county has a policy for everything that the road and bridge does or doesn't do. If this is one of them that we feel there should be a policy adopted by the commissioner, so be it. Uh, if it's a, then it becomes a county policy, not a road and bridge policy. So, but maybe you can give that some thought and. Sure. Yeah, I think at this point, time it's just kind of like part of the policy. Right. It's never gone any further. Right. It's never. And so I think everybody has a right of appeal. Sure. Uh, they yeah, may not I get mean, anywhere with it, but I think that, that process right. needs to be in place. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not going to say if I went in this gentleman's uh, position or shoes that I wouldn't have done the same thing. Sure. So, hey, you know, yeah. this is a matter of convenience. Yeah. I sure like to have one. So. Well, all right. Well, thank you. you know, Appreciate you coming down. You got it. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I told you I'd recognize in you. Every other county I've ever covered to live, the Planning and Zoning Commission is usually where this kind of question goes to first, and then the county commissioners are kind of the the source of appeal after right. that, so right. I'm sort of wondering, you don't have that as kind of your set process? No, not, not through planning and zoning. This strictly in this county would be a road and bridge. Okay. Yeah. As for the 30-some years I've lived here anyway, it never did get to, to the planning and zoning. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. 
Uh, next item of business consideration, <coughs> excuse me, of signing the Department of Revenue's Memorandum of Understanding. Ms. Kelly, you want to take the lead on that, please? Yes. Um, this <coughs> is a uh, yearly MOU that we sign with the Department of Revenue that um, gives me appoints me as the person that takes care of the sales tax and lodging tax as far as um, monthly they send me a list of taxes that have been paid and then I look at that list and just kind of keep up with it to make sure that all those taxes look correct. And so we just send, sign the memorandum of understanding literally. By my the MOU is for confidentiality purposes. <clears throat> right. That's the whole thing, and I I looked at it. The uh, I wanted to know what the consequences were if she violated. It's all on her, frankly. She's the one to go to jail. Um, she's just cool. agreeing to follow these uh, rules that are imposed by Department of Revenue. Right. And the confidential the confidential part is. Just, you know, I get people that come in and say, hey, I think my neighbor has a <clears throat> short-term rental. I want to know if they're paying taxes on that. And I cannot tell them. I cannot tell you guys whether they're paying taxes. I can say, give me their name, and I can look into it. And if from the list it doesn't look like they are, then I contact Department of Revenue, and they investigate it. That's the and did you say, Ms. Kelly, that this is something that you sign every year? Yes. Okay. It has to be signed by December 31st. I remember it last year, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same thing again. I'll go ahead and I'll move that we authorize Kelly to sign a memorandum of understanding for control of confidential data. It requires Tom's signature yeah. also. Mm -hmm. then is there a second? Have, I'll second. So we move to second to sign the uh, memora memorandum, not misspelled unless I don't know memorandum, Memo memorandum of understanding for control of confidential <laughs> data. Huh? Yeah. That'll throw you right. for a loop. This is a memorandum. Yeah. Memorandum. Uh, How embarrassing. Yeah. Right? The Department of Revenue of yeah. Colorado yeah. said right. something like that. That's right. <laughs> Uh, with the Department of Revenue uh, discussion. <laughs> Public comment. Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of signing the memorandum of understanding with the Department of Revenue on behalf of uh, County Clerk and Recorder, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Opposed, nay. Carries. Maybe I'll bring, I'll bring that up to him when I. Yeah. Just draw on it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, one is for sales the sales tax, tax and one is for the lodging tax. Anything else come before the board, gentlemen? Not for me. Mr. Frank? No, sir. Move on. Public comment. Yes, sir. I have one. I, I, I would like to comment on the actions by your administrative assistant. Uh -oh. We had a problem with the elevator here because we didn't pay our annual dues of $33. Oh. So we're going to log us out and charge us $500. Ooh. So I said, where the hell do we go for that? I thought I sent it to you. No. But anyways, we don't know what happened. I called her. And by God, everything worked. Well, my God. 
Great. Good. Um, Thank you. you guys talked about the court of it. Where's it going to be? We the least corner. purchased seven acres right behind east right of the scales. Behind. Do you know where the scale house is and those yep. truck scales? Okay. Where the sheriff's department yep. is? East and a little bit south of there in that big open lot. Oh, okay. We're going to tear down his ratty jail. Today. Okay. <laughs> in the shadow of the <laughs> Tower. Help. <laughs> you will help. He's going to donate that. <laughs> what would happen to the courthouse building? Yeah. Uh, we'll continue to utilize it for our other officers. Yeah. Probably with some upgrades. I don't want to say slight upgrades, but we've got some work we need to do in that. It's a historic now. building. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and, and along that vein, uh, Sheriff Byron and I talked about it a little bit. I think we have to move ourselves mentally in a little different position that that it does it's not the responsibility of the sheriff's department to move forward with this whole justice center right. complex that's going to have to be a commissioner driven uh, initiative and i think we need to start getting prepared to do that so uh i would guess probably after the 21st of november we'll get a little more traction I just don't want to be shooting my mouth off about what I think we should do, and then no K bomb says, "Well, this is what you, this is what we're recommending you do." Response to that, Sheriff? Or I know you are worried about us sitting on this and not keeping this momentum moving forward. Well, we just—I mean, we've spent the last year and a half, and there's members of the of the, our citizens of the county that have been part of that uh, board and and the committee that's been working on getting this going and we have lost a lot of momentum because we haven't been having meetings because now we're, it's like we're hurry up and wait and well, are we going to make a decision or not make a decision and and like i said earlier i mean uh riley johnson's told us you know it's you're looking at at least 15 percent a year in construction costs increase if we start and, you know and we're not overly optimistic that we're going to be able to raise that those funds to, to do a project like that anyway so um, the longer we I mean the, this can's been kicked down the road for a long time uh, already and so it's not doing anybody any good and I just don't want it to fall by the wayside all the work that's been done and the money that through grants not necessarily through county money a little bit or, I mean some county money obviously but um, I just, I just don't want it to fall by the wayside at all. So yeah, we're at a really good, really good side. point now. You got the design concepts. We, you got the big picture strategy. Now we just got to get, get the money and build it. And we've got to keep that momentum here. Absolutely right. Yeah, I think we're kind of at that same crossroad with that strategic plan. You know, it gets a lot of attention. Everybody gets excited, and then life gets in the way. The next thing you know, it ends, yeah. ends up on a back burner and. So, uh, well, ideas and, and, and plans, uh, they're a lot easier than the actual, the, the actual getting that done. And right. so it's, it's easy to do a lot of talking, but right. yeah. Anything else? Yes, sir. Yes, one more question. Yep. No problem. Our air conditioning system is now up. It's cold. We don't need it. <laughs> but if you want to loan it to us? <laughs> looked at as far as a, a maintenance a, a, Okay. Continuing right. maintenance service. Okay. Never had the first time. Right now, our furnaces need checking. They were checked a year ago. They're just coming on. You want me to just go ahead and get somebody to take care of the furnaces? Are you still working to get a, to get a, get a say? Yeah, you're picking the scab off a big old wound here right now. Okay. But yes, I think we do need to get the get the furnaces. Uh, worked on this fall. We don't have a maintenance contract. You want me to call up someone to have them? I would tell you yes. I don't know that I have the authority to make that decision on my own, but 
Well, somebody has to uh, make sure you're going to go. Right. They're going to go. They've right. never been, they did last year. Mario took care of last year. Right. Air conditioners have never been touched. But the Florida should be looking right. at right now. Yeah. So. Uh, you notice it's nice and warm in here now. Yeah. It's working. That part. Well, it brings up a good point. Who maintained this a county building? Right. We well, it generally it's subcontract, contracted labor. Exactly. So, gentlemen, you're right with, by consent, asking Mr. John to contract or contact somebody to come and service the furniture? Of course. Yeah. If you don't want to do it, I can, but. Well, I mean, I don't want to, I mean, I don't want to ask, ask me to do it. Basically. But, hmm? why, why isn't there a. Contract. We just never have done. They didn't do a maintenance contract when they remodeled this building. I just, it ought to be the I'm same from guys. the whole county perspective. Well, All the county buildings just well, have a contract. They should. We don't. Okay, fair enough. Put it on the agenda. Put it on the agenda. Well, well that's the way things get done. That's a yeah, that's there's, the there needs to be some background work done before we delve into that. We got a little issue we have to hammer out. So, all right. But yes, if you'd like to move forward with contacting somebody, if you don't have any luck with that, certainly give me a shout and we'll we'll go from there. Uh, anything else? Public comment. Who? Would you elbow him and wake him up? Who? Who is that guy? <laughs> uh, you know, the only me to throw you, the so. only reason he shows up at these meetings. So we don't drag these chairs across the floor. <laughs> no, that's Roper. That. Yeah. yeah. That, that's it. Uh, thank you for being here, folks. We appreciate it. Anything else, gentlemen? The chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Then. Second seconded to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Aye. Motion adjourned. Aye. I find myself wanting to vote on everything. I yeah. I, I couldn't do it. Oh, man, they would throw me out.